Miami, Florida, one of the most popular vacation destinations in the world. But for the eight remaining drivers in the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs, they're so relaxing today with just two chances left to grab a seat in the championship four. There's a lot of fighting left to do in these last two races. From Homestead, Miami Speedway, it's going to be a spectacular setting for sure. One of the drivers' favorite racetracks. Miami is top three favorite on my list. The biggest thing with Homestead, if you can have that really good long run speed, it's going to be huge. The win by a playoff team today is an automatic berth into the championship. We can control our own destiny in a lot of ways and not making mistakes in one of those ways. Don't be too scared to make these moves and make different things happen because that one point or one spot can be the difference maker on making it to that final four. Race two in this round of eight. I'm definitely circling Miami is my way to get to the final four. Welcome everyone to Countdown to Green. Time is running out for those still alive in the quest to be the 2023 Xfinity Series champion with Phoenix and championship Saturday just two weeks away. The Peacock Pit Box located in pit stall number one today at the very head end of pit road along with Kyle Petty and the mayor Jeff Burton. I am Marty Snyder. You know, non-playoff driver Jeff Riley Herbst won at Las Vegas last week. So nobody's locked into the championship for yet. Does that add to the sense of urgency today? If you don't have a sense of urgency coming into the day, you're not paying attention to what happens in this <laughs> sport. I don't care where you are. John Hunter Nemechek, he's in pretty good shape, but a mistake today on a track where it's easy to make mistake. He could be in a position where he's got to do great things at Martinsville. I do think immediate pressure, though, on Sammy Smith mm. and Sheldon Creed. Those guys have enough points. They're far enough behind. They are going to have to have a major sense of urgency, but then execute on it. Kyle, Miami, a very unique mile-and-a-half racetrack. How is it different, and are there certain drivers that it plays to their favor? Very unique. It's an oval, Marty. It's not a D-shaped oval like a lot of the mile-and-a-halves that we run. It's a true oval with a progressive banking. I look at it, plays in the hands of Cole Custer, Sheldon Creed, and our very own Dale Jr. <laughs> Get that fence, baby, all day long. So Kyle mentioned it, Dale Earnhardt Jr., not in the broadcast booth today because he's in the race today. Well, he picked this place because he loves to run the high line, but also because, in his own words, he had a blast at Bristol as a driver and an owner. Here's how you start the playoffs, boys. It's Bristol, baby, come on! How cool is it that I got the battle with the boss man, Dale Jr.? Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to lead the lap, and the crowd goes wild. We had a shot at winning it if the car was going to run good at the end. I'm on fire, boy. There's smoke in the right side of the car. I had a blast. Justin wins. It makes me want to do more, so I'll have some fun homestead riding the fence. It's Bristol, baby. Let's go! As you can see there, everything but the ending went just right at Bristol. Junior, what do you see for today's race in Homestead, Miami? It's a real warm one. Uh, it's slick. Man, that track was, was out of hand yesterday, and I think it's just the same today. Um, you know, running in the middle of the afternoon, you can use the shadow of the wall up in one and two to get a little cool uh, track temp, put the, right, put the right sides in the shadow uh, as the sun's setting. But down in three and four, there's, there's really not nothing to help you but the wall a little bit. Um, get a lot of advice from a lot of drivers on what to do, and hopefully we can go out there and make it happen. Didn't qualify as well as I'd hoped. Uh, I don't know how going out first hurt or uh, bothered the lap, but uh, I feel like the car is way better now. We practiced in the top 10, and if I can figure out how to get against that fence quick enough, uh, maybe we can make some ground up and get up there and run good. And have you helped your oldest daughter to manage expectations this time? Because she was just disappointed you didn't go out there and win. Yeah, she thinks she just should drive right to the front, like in the cartoons, and uh, win the race. But. Uh, Hopefully we have a good result today and finish where the car should. I think the car is a, a great race car, and I got a lot to figure out in a very short period of time. Uh, the first couple stages are pretty short, but um, and we got a, we got a lot of ground to make up starting 23rd. So it's not a, it's it's a wide track, but maybe not as easy as the pass as some people might think. Uh, but I'm really happy to be here. Really excited to be in the race. Thanks to Bass Pro Shops and Johnny Morris for allowing us to do this. I usually do one a year, so this year I got two races. Hopefully we'll get to the finish line today. Good luck today, Marty. David always plays out like it does in the cartoons, right? Exactly. So maybe Isla will be a little happier today. Uh, you know, Kylie showed he could be competitive yep. at Bristol, but how is Miami a different challenge for Dale Jr.? Okay, Bristol, you run up next to the wall, you enter the corner at around 130. Here you do it at 180, about an inch, inch and a half, maybe two inches off of it. Dale Jr. has said, uh, the speedways run in the top, the closer you get, the more dangerous it is. But here's the quote from Dale Jr. that describes it all. 
I love racing at the top of the track. <laughs> it's a gut check every lap, and it truly is when you watch him do it. After Bristol, what's his expectation? Right, going into Bristol, he was kind of like, I'm going to go have fun, go go have a good time, race against these guys, and then he's leading the race and has a problem. So now, and you heard him in his interview after Bristol, we were going to have a good run if the car was performing. Before Bristol, he was like, we're going to have a good run if I perform. Yes. It's a different mentality for Dale Jr. going into today's race. Is it me, or did he pick two of the most difficult tracks, Jeff? <laughs> Bristol and Miami. He picked them because he wants to run on the wall, oh, and yep. that's what he's going to That's what he wanted to do at Bristol, and that's what he wants to do here. How many times are we going to hear that this weekend? Uh, among the Xfinity Series regulars last week in Las Vegas, it was an emotional first career win for hometown kid Riley Herbst. <laughs> try to get that first win for myself and everybody on the Monster Energy team. We're searching for victory lane and we want to win. He's been so close so many times in so many of these races, but today he's going to make it happen. Let him go and bring it home, okay? Vegas Stadium, Riley Herbst, his first ever win in the Xfinity Series. Oh yeah, buddy. Welcome to the NASCAR Xfinity Series victory lane, man. Oh my goodness, you don't even know what this means. What this takes off my chest. I can't believe it. A huge win last weekend for Riley Herb. So what does getting your first win finally do for you with three races left in the season? Oh, my goodness, Kim. Uh, just so much confidence. Just a huge weight off my shoulders. Everybody on this Monster Energy team has been working really, really hard. Um, so it was really cool to win back at home with all my friends and family there. And hopefully we can finish out this year strong, um, cross our T's, dot our I's, and get ready for next year. And hopefully being Phoenix next year, racing for the big trophy. Riley rolls off from the seventh position. Well, what a huge day for Riley Herbst. You know, you think about he and his family. So many people in early in Riley's career said he couldn't do it. He can't win races. He shouldn't be here. Blah, 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 blah. What did he do? He kept his head down, kept working, kept fighting. And when he won his first race, it wasn't by a little bit. It wasn't by <laughs> yeah. a late race restart. It yeah. wasn't by anything other than just kicking their butt. I mean, it wasn't even close. And I think that says a lot about that young man. He's a really nice guy fun to hang out with but just the, the ability to put it all behind you don't listen to all that mess become a better race car driver and go execute and a lot of good things for him coming in the future a 15 second win is a statement so kyle could another non-playoff driver win today yes and it's josh berry uh, you know he won three races last year he wants to go out on top every driver wants to go out on top he's headed to replace a legend in the cup series next year but he wants to show these guys at the infinity series xfinity series that he still has what it takes to beat them on a regular basis replacing kevin harvick's pretty big shoes to fill let's see two spots could lock up today one on a win one on points none of the spots could be locked up today a lot of scenarios could play out well here in miami you can see it all the beaches of course the tourism the nightlife south beach and collins avenue fun fact time miami-dade county welcomed almost 30 million visitors last year and kyle four million passengers left the port of miami on a cruise they do that every year all you of the that, same boat you? marty all of the <laughs> same boat baby and since 1995 homestead miami speedway has been a fixture here in south florida as well NASCAR Fan Rewards is here, and it's free to join. Earn points all season long by watching races, playing fantasy, buying race tickets, and more. Save your points to trade them in for free tickets, autographs, merchandise, and one-of-a-kind race day experiences. Visit NASCAR.com slash Fan Rewards. Well, Kyle, here's how the Xfinity Series standings look with two races left in the round of eight. Yeah, and I know those numbers look like they're way far apart, but with stage racing mm. and stage points, it tightens up really quick. The problem is all these guys continually run in the top ten. It's tough to make up points when everybody's running the same. Cole Custer continued his amazing playoff run with a third-place finish at Las Vegas. The Stuart Haas Racing Drivers with Kim Coon. Cole Custer will start from the pole today and after Stuart Haas Racing's really strong showing last weekend. How optimistic are you that you can get to victory lane here today? I feel good about it. You know, I feel like uh, everybody at SHR has worked so hard, you know, getting our cars that little bit better throughout the whole year. And I feel like we've really hit our stride here in the playoffs and um, got a really fast house animation Ford Mustang. So um, hopefully keep it up there. You know, it's all about trying to be good after lap 20. And um, I think we had a solid car in the long run yesterday, but um, you just got to still can't get complacent. You guys keep keep working at it. Dave, this track has historically been great for Cole Custer. Won here back in 2017. So Chandler Smith has an interesting day ahead of him. Starts below the cut line. I mean, 
I don't even know how you even start today being a new dad again and then have to go racing and try to get yourself to uh, Phoenix in the championship four. Yeah, no, it was it was really hard leaving my, leaving Noble and my wife for sure. Uh, luckily, they got discharged yesterday uh, when I left, not too not too long after I left. But I'm super super proud of her. Of, uh, just this whole pregnancy, she just had such a good mindset. Was busting her butt trying to do everything she could do to you know make it easy and stuff. And uh, I, I'm super super proud of her. She pushed for 57 seconds. 57 seconds. It, crazy thing i've never heard of it but uh uh god was definitely looking up uh, upon our newborn son he came out and the umbilical cord was tied in an airtight knot so uh it, it's crazy there's people out there that still still don't believe that there's a lord savior out there and i just want to show him that picture and just let him know what he's done for us so um i'm ready to get going today ready to get back home and see the wife and kids for sure though kenzie is chandler's hero chandler starts 12th today Let's bring our crew chief, Steve Letarte, into the conversation. Steve, time for trend reports. And we'll start with a driver that many have in their championship for Justin Allgaier. But he's at his worst track. How do you see him trending right now? Well, it's his worst track, but he's trending up. Allgaier is 21 points above the cut line. He has three wins this season, but two in the last seven races. This is the day he may not win in Miami, but a solid day ahead. Austin Hill lost some points at Las Vegas. How do you see him trending? Well, at 19 points above, you would think I would say up, but it's actually neutral for Austin Hill. Four wins this year, but three of them happened very early in the season. His last three races, while they're inside the top 10, they're outside the top five. It's around eight, Marty. You got to be better than just inside the top 10. Well, Sam Mayer had the walk-off win just to get into the round of eight. Steve, how has he been trending since then? Cur oh, trending up for the career, for the year, for everything. Well, even though he's 16 points below, those three career wins happened all in the last 11 races. You see the confidence on his face trending up for Sam Mayer. At minus 35 is Sammy Smith in must-win territory, Steve. You can't be nice to all of them, Marty. Smith trending down. Only mm. two top tens in the last 11 races. And I would like to say it's all driver, but really when I look at the whole team, too many mistakes, pit road, pit box, behind the wheel, they got to clean that up. So, Steve, when you look at the Homestead Miami Speedway from a crew chief challenge standpoint, what is the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge is there's nowhere to hide. There's not a lot of creative strategy, no two tires, no staying out. You're going to pit, you're going to put four tires on it, and you have to have car good enough to survive and to lead. Uh, there's not a lot of tricks to running well. All right, Steve, we'll see you for the call of the race. See you in a bit. Uh, so, Jeff, that was Steve on the challenge for the crew chief. What's the challenge for the driver behind the wheel here at Miami? Well, there are a lot of tricks to that, and it is all about throttle. You know, when you go back to that throttle, when you come off the throttle, you want to put the right side inches, not feet, inches from the wall. And to maintain that rhythm, it's all about how much throttle and when you use it. And it is a big difference in speed from being like those cars right against the wall versus being a foot away from it. It just provides it provides a cushion of air. It provides more grip. And that's where you've got to be if you want to make good lap time. It's small changes in a driving style to make it make a major difference at this racetrack. There is speed there, but it will reach out and grab you as well. When we come back, a very special feature on Xfinity Series driver Mason Massey for a special occasion, International Stuttering Awareness Day. You won't want to miss it next. A spectacular day in South Florida. Green flags in the air. It seems in the playoffs, there's a special form of mayhem. Two cars involved, both of them slamming the outside retaining wall. Trouble in turn four, Austin Sindrick. Trouble on the back straightaway, but they're crashing behind them. There's Riley Hunt gets turned. Inside wall, hard. All of different racing agendas crashed and collided, literally. Wall trouble in turn number three, one car into the wall and gets him. Oh, we, have a wall. we just see the 38 coming around. Fire coming out of the right front. Man, they are getting after it. A win here in Miami is going to give him a shot with the championship board. Yeah, let's go to Phoenix. Run for the championship. Marty, my hands are sweating, and I can feel the wind on my back, and what I'm feeling is urgency and intensity and a shot at that championship for it. It's all on the back and on the shoulders of these guys. Well, KP, tomorrow is International Stuttering Awareness Day. You might be thinking, what does that have to do with racing? Well, for 26-year-old Mason Massey, it means everything. Mason has stuttered his entire life, but he has not let that take away his dream. Uh, I'm a, a, a Mason Massey, and uh, I drive race cars. 
Uh, I uh, have over 300 wins. You know, I used to count when I was younger, but I kind of started to lose count. That's racing is a uh, really cruel, and life can be really cruel too. That's I stuttered all my life, and um, I definitely have some people that make fun of me when I was younger, that mock me. Being mocked over and over will make you question, you know, why am I even here? What, what is my purpose? When I was younger, I always had a hard time uh, saying my name. It made me work harder to where everyone knew my name so I wouldn't have to say it. We all have our, uh, our challenge in, in life, and you have to make it a positive thing to uh, have a good influence on people and uh, show them that it's possible to overcome your challenges. I don't know what the future holds, but I really would like to think that uh, my future holds a lot of pages in it. And, um, and I'm gonna work hard and just, and just uh, make sure we write those pages. Here's the thing about Mason. His dad, Mays, just told me a story about how he's paying it forward. And you're asked to do that quite a bit and encourage folks. Can you tell me the story about the medical student? Uh, I talked to him uh, it's probably two or three weeks ago, and uh, he was going through a tough time with medical school and all that stuff. And um, I just try to give him some words of encouragement, just help him out. And uh, that's what I do. I just, I know how it is to go through all this stuff with stuttering growing up and everything. And and, and uh, I just wanted to help him out and tell him to keep chasing his dreams and just trying to put a positive message out there in the world for anybody that's going through anything. Uh, <laughs> It don't matter what you're going through, uh, I think you're still able to chase your dreams, and that's the way I've always lived by. How'd that conversation end with the guy? Uh, it was really good. It was about a, a, like an hour and a half or so, and uh, at the end of it, we were cutting up laughing, and he was encouraged by it, and uh, he was ready to go, so hopefully he does well. It's amazing. Good luck today, Marty. The, the big news is the guy's not quitting. He listened to Mason. Mason encouraged him, and he's going to hang on and chase his dream, too. Yeah, Jeff, I think anyone who makes it to this level has to overcome a, a situation, right? How much of his story is about that, well, overcoming the obstacle, no matter what it looked like? To me, it's about the courage yeah. you know, that it takes to, to say, hey, I've got an issue. Uh, not let others, you know, put you down. Not let others form who you are and decide I'm going to do the best I can. And I'm going to make and not only for myself, for others mm -hmm. and then taking time out of your day to make others lives better. That's 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 a great human. I mean, that is that is what we want from everybody in, on this earth. But, you know, to have the courage to fight through adversity, none of us are perfect. We all have our issues. We got to have the courage to become better and find a way to get through those issues the best we can. Yeah, I love that quote in there where he said, when I was younger, I had a hard time saying my name. It made it, it made me work harder. So everybody knew my name. Mm. So I wouldn't have to say it. We know his name. He's a champion. He's a winner already in life. That's a great, great inspirational story. I've known Mason for a long time, and back in his Bandolero days, he once let another young man win a race because he didn't want to do the post-race interview. So he has come so far, and I'm happy to report his dream was always to be in NASCAR. Today will be his 66th start in a major NASCAR Touring Series race. Way to go, Mason. When we come back, we'll hear from John Hunter Nemechek, plus Dale Jr.'s in the race today. Can he lead laps like he did at Bristol? We'll discuss next. Winning that championship would just prove to a lot of people what I can do. You have to have that resilience, you gotta dig deep and show that you wanna win that championship. That accolade of winning the championship is truly a gift that you could never buy. I've been able to win races, win poles, win stages, but haven't won a championship yet. So it's time to go hoist that big trophy at the end of the year. Just two shots left for eight playoff drivers to lock themselves in for a shot to hoist that big trophy, as John Hunter just said there. At Phoenix in two weeks, all four seats at the table wide open. No drivers locked in yet, although John Hunter Nemechek is close, Kim Kuhn. That's right, Marty. At plus 47 points to the cut line, you would think you're the most comfortable of the playoff drivers. So how does that points position influence what you do here today? 
Uh, I mean, it's nice to have those points, right? But at the same time, I, I'm not super comfortable with where we're at. We we got to be better, and uh, we we got to get some more points today. Hopefully, if we don't win the race, we can lock in on points today, and uh, we definitely have the opportunity to do so. So, my guides have given me a really fast Pi Barker Toyota GR Supra yesterday in practice. We made some changes overnight, and hopefully, we can have it as fast as Xfinity 10G today. Uh, I'm looking forward to today. Hopefully, get up and rip the boards, but most of all, keep the right side clean until the end. Um, you got to have it in order to win the race here. And so I think with our points position, we can play it smart and hopefully go for a really solid points day, if not a win. Marty, they start from the front row here today. Jeff, they're so close. Do they play it more conservative to make sure they lock in? Keep the right side clean. That's what John Hunter Nemechek said. He did not do that here in the past, racing for a truck championship, made a mistake, took him out of an opportunity to win a championship. He cannot make that mistake today. How about Justin Allgaier? Never finished in the top five at Miami. Why is this place so tough for him, Kyle? You know, I have no idea, and I don't believe he has any idea. Sometimes there's racetracks that just doesn't fit your style, but I got two words for you. Daytona. <laughs> Bristol, Tennessee. He conquered those this year. Why can't he conquer this place today? Uh, Jeff, how about your booth mate, Dell Jr.? Can he quote, as he said at Bristol, legit lead laps today at Miami like he did at Bristol? He's got a long way to go where he qualified. That's going to be the problem. He's got to get some track position. Now he's not racing for points. So if you get the caution at the right time, they can play some strategy to get that track position. He's going to have to be super aggressive on restarts to get the lead. Is he nervous or excited about today? I'm nervous for him. <laughs> <laughs> but he loves this Great place. answer. Hey, when we come back, which playoff driver is desperate for a good result today, plus the pre-race ceremonies on a beautiful fall day in South Florida. Homestead Miami Speedway, one of the driver's favorite racetracks, comes at a critical point in the season. Just two chances left to lock in a spot in the championship for and a shot to win the 2023 Xfinity Series Championship. Kyle, which playoff driver needs to capitalize today the most? Cole Custer. He got his first win here in the Xfinity Series. Uh, he has been the runner up here the last two starts, and here's the kicker. He has led more laps at this racetrack than all the other playoff contenders combined. Mm. He needs to capitalize on a place that loves him as much as he loves it. I'm just curious, when you were walking through the garage area earlier, just two shots left to make the championship four, do you feel that sense of urgency from those playoff teams? No, you can't feel the sense of urgency because of the sense of pressure. The urgency doesn't get through. <laughs> the pressure is overwhelming on these guys. Look at the packed grid here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Beautiful fall day. Time for today's pre-race ceremonies from Miami. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise as you are able and remove your hats as the Olympic Heights High School Marine Corps Junior ROTC Color Guard presents our nation's colors. Here to offer today's invocation, please welcome from Barco Presbyterian Church, Pastor Scott Kearns. Please pray with me. Dear God, who made the world and everyone in it, Thank you for this day, this track, these drivers and crews, and for this South Florida weather. Thank you for the freedom to race, the skill to win, and the grace to compete. Father, we bow our heads and hearts to you because you're powerful, but we raise our prayer to you because you're listening. Would you protect these competitors and fans? We cheer so loud that we lose our voices, and it's just a glimpse of what we're made for. One day we will all with one uni unified voice cheer for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome the Palmetto Ridge High School Choir.
on the other side, Jeff Burton will show us how the sunset could affect the race today. It's time to get the engines cranked here in South Florida next. There's a lot of fighting left to do in these last two races. From Homestead, Miami Speedway, it's going to be a spectacular setting for sure. One of the driver's favorite racetracks. Miami is top three favorite on my list. The biggest thing with Homestead, if you can have that really good long run speed, it's going to be huge. The win by a playoff team today is an automatic berth into the championship. We can control our own destiny in a lot of ways and not making mistakes in one of those Don't be too scared to make these moves and make different things happen because that one point or one spot can be the difference maker on making it to that final four. Race two in this round of eight. I'm definitely circling Miami is my way to get to the final four. Eight drivers left, four spots open. Who wants to be the Xfinity Series champion in 2023? A win by a playoff driver today locks in their spot to championship Saturday in two weeks. Before we get the engine started, let's head to pit road and check in with Kim Kuhn. Well, Marty, playoff driver Sam Mayer enters this weekend 16 points below the elimination line after just an okay showing last weekend at Vegas. So how did he prepare for this weekend, knowing how important today will be? He reviewed over 10 and a half hours of race film this week. He told me he watched every Miami Xfinity race from 2017 through 2020. He wanted to look at every little variable here and what can make a difference from the driver's seat. Last year in his only Miami Xfinity start, he finished fifth. We'll see if all that studying paid off, Dave. Kim for the 21 of Austin Hill. He is plus 19 to the cut line, so a good spot to be. And what else is on his side? A good weekend so far. Kruchy Fandy Street told me this is one of the best weekends we've started so far this year. They qualified fourth. They had speed in practice. And don't forget, Austin Hill is a former winner here, 2019 in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Marty? Well, Dave, there may be no track on the NASCAR calendar that is more high risk, high reward than Homestead Miami Speedway. So, Kyle, when drivers say that, what do they mean? They mean you get up on the boards, man, ripping the fence, and there's <laughs> speed up there. The yep. reward is speed. The danger is if you get up there and you make a mistake, you'll be watching Phoenix out on the racetrack with the other guys, just mm. not a shot at the championship. The guy that rips the boards the best today gets his ticket punched. To Phoenix. So give me a few drivers who balance that art of running the wall without hitting it very well. I said it before, Cole Custer, Sheldon Creed, Dale Jr., but I do believe this too, and Jeff Burton said it earlier, these young drivers with no experience, they need to get up there and learn how to rip those boards so that when they come back here later, but there may be a guy that pops out of that group. Yeah, and, and Sammy Smith, you know, Steve mentioned yes. earlier, he is in a must-win situation, but you can't force things here at Miami. Time for race number two of the round of eight. Let's get the engines cranked in Miami. And now, race fans, here to say the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome the executive director of the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, Roger Young. Drivers, start your engines! Good. Thank you, fair enough. Good. 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 Whenever you're ready here, you can fire. Are oh, you just thinking of check in with nobody today or what? It's hard to get drivers to agree on almost anything, but one thing almost all say is this is one of their favorite racetracks. Why is that? Well, it starts with this asphalt. Look how rough it is. This stuff just rips the rubber right off the tires. That makes the car drive really bad late in the run, and every driver thinks they're the best. Make it drive bad, that's an advantage to me. The other thing is, this is 18 degrees here. Right here in this groove in between the seams is 19. This is 20 degrees. The more you climb up this banking, the more banking gains. That makes more grip, that makes your car drive better, and then it's this guy right here. Everybody wants to be right against it, not here. You want to be right against it, it even maybe leaving some marks, scuff it up a little bit. That's where the speed is, but that's where the danger is. It's going green when we come back. Just south of the skyline of Miami, it's the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs from Homestead Miami Speedway, and the contender boats 300. Dale Jr. has run a race already, but loves the fact that you can run right against the wall when you come to Homestead Miami, and he's told us about the art of running the fence. The walls at Homestead Miami Speedway are like a hurricane. The closer you get to the wall, the more dangerous it becomes. Sideways, yeah. Founded by Ralph Sanchez back in 1993 as an effort to rebuild Homestead after Hurricane Andrew, this track has been just that. 
a rapidly rotating storm system. But for those who have an eye for success here at Homestead Miami, they need to practice the art of the high line. Blaney bounces off the safer barrier. Or more commonly known as ripping the fence. He's on the wall, he's hauling ass. I cannot figure out if it's like me how to go back without hitting the wall. I love racing at the top of the racetrack. It's a gut check every lap to look deep into the corner and floor it, sailing the car right up against the letters on the wall. I'm gonna slow down so I didn't hit the wall. Dirt car racers have thrived on the speed gains inches from the wall. Stewart. Look at Stewart drive that car in. Wow. Car. Edwards. Carl Edwards was checked out. Reddick. Yes. Larson. Got an 8.1 second lead. Have all shaved the wall en route to victory here. Hi, Abby, baby. The opportunity to go topside is always there. Now to the outside. Here comes Legato. The risk and reward comparison will be heavy. We're in the wall hard here. It's all throttle control. He had great throttle control earlier this year. Normally only runs one race, but earlier this year, Bristol was impressive. Yeah, so nervous when he headed to Bristol about qualifying, DJ. But then when he settled in, he looked like the Dale Jr. Bristol of old having a good time. Well, the fans loved the fact that he was going to be there. And when he got out front, it was just incredible to watch. Looked like he had been racing all along, that he didn't miss a beat. But then problems crept up. Yeah, it wasn't meant to be. A little fire on the inside of the car got his attention. I can assure you he told us about it and burned his fire suit a little bit. But in the end, a ride to victory lane is car owner. So it was a good time. Let's check in with our old buddy down there. Hey, Junior, it's your co-workers up at the booth. You got a copy? Yes, sir. Well, man, we normally see you once a year. This year, you added Miami to the list as well. What makes this track so fun that you added it to your schedule? It's really hard. Um, it's slick, worn out. Got to run all over the place. You, obviously, we talk about running the fence all the time, but you might have to look around for speed other ways. But it's just a track. I've never been that great here. I definitely love running the fence, but hard not to come here when you get an opportunity. It's one of the one of the fun mile and a half with a lot of off-throttle, and you're chasing this race car all day. So, Junior, DJ, uh, not much practice yesterday, and even though you're one of the best ever at running up against the fence, how long will it take you to get comfortable to go up there where all the speed is made? Yeah, I think that's that's the that's the question. Uh, yesterday I was losing practice and certainly didn't want to hit the wall in practice. Didn't want to get on television that way. So um, I don't want to get on television that way today. And watching last year's race, it's easy to knock the right rear tire off the car. The tire, you know, can get flat and. You don't want to go, go down a set of tires in this race. Your race is over with if you have to come to pit road to change the rights under green for an unscheduled stop. So it's, you know, it's a tough balance of running up there if you can make the speed and wanting to make the speed versus, you know, getting yourself behind on tires real quick. All right, thanks for talking with us. You have a great day. Hey, and I appreciate you running another race so I can get in the booth one day. Have a good time. Man, I love you up there, buddy. Hope y'all have fun. That was a Hall of Famer to Hall of Famer conversation we just had right there. Marty, it's going to be a challenge, though. Dale Jr., a little behind in qualifying. Yeah, as cars come down pit road to check their pit road speed for the day, let's check out today's starting grid. And as we look at through one rows one through five, let's talk about Cole Custer, the only former winner in the field, clearly has a short run speed by the double zero winning the pole. But he told me he's a little bit worried about the long run speed. But guess who was fastest on the 10 lap average? Cole Custer. He clearly has the car to beat. He could get his first win in the playoffs and advance to the championship four this afternoon, Kim. Let's go a little further in the field. Chandler Smith starting the outside of row six. He has been very consistent in the playoffs, finishing 12th or better in all four races, including three top five finishes. Then Sam Mayer, he's in row seven. Only one start here, but it was a fifth place finish. Needs a really good point stay. And Sam considers Homestead Miami Speedway one of his top two favorite racetracks, Dave. A little further down, we'll see that driver owner again, Dale Earnhardt Jr., qualified 23rd. Watch him from there, though, because remember, when he had that good run at Bristol and got to the lead, he came from 15th starting position. So as for Mason Massey, talk to him early on in the show today. What can he do from 35th? Well, he had a top 10 at Kansas earlier this year, so he knows how to get to that front group if he needs to. Rick? That is well, correct. Talked a lot. Yeah, Rick, sorry for down here on Pit Road. We've talked a ton about all the challenges this racetrack presents. One of the things is the sun. That sun, as it starts to set, 
it rolls over the front straightaway. And when you come off of turn four, you are looking directly into that sun. We actually have seen wrecks on pit road. Think about last year, Martin Truex on pit road could not see a sign because the sun was right in his eyes. Saw it late, checked up. Kyle Larson right behind him, hit him, spun him out. So those are the challenges that that sun presents. It's a huge deal. And on top of that, you want to run right against the wall with the sun just beaming in your eyes. Just one more thing to throw at the drivers. Thanks, Jeff. And yeah, definitely drivers looking out for that. All right, guys, let's have a look at the keys to victory lane brought to you by Ruoff Mortgage. Well, we've talked about it. This place very, very dis difficult. You have to limit your risk. While the top is the key, you can run two feet off from it, be a little bit less risk, may not be as fast, but the, the chance of getting into the fence, DJ, less of a chance. Yeah, and another thing is, is you don't want to waste a set of tires. And by that, if you try to overdrive, you might get turned sideways, use that set of tires up that you can't use later on. I think Dale Jr. was cheating because he mentioned that on the <laughs> radio, so I think he looked at our keys to victory. And big picture, understand what you need. John Hunter can lock in. Don't let your ego try to get you in a position. Just do the best you can. All right, let's listen in to Austin Hills Radio for a little pep talk. Minimize mistakes, maximize all day, smoother than the pit. Be there at the end, see if we can't go ahead and lock ourselves in here. So, wouldn't want to do it with anyone or with anyone else. So, appreciate all the hard work from everyone, the RCR and ECR. Let's go do it. Two of the best cars starting up front in that front row. It's all about the top, except for the restarts. Right now, it's all about everywhere. We're going to see cars from the white line all the way to the fence. Cole Custer in the double zero. He'll start on the outside. John Hunter Nemechek in the 20 on the inside line. And again, in practice and qualifying, two of the best here at Miami. As we get ready to start this, the second race of the round of eight, another opportunity to get to the championship four. And it begins right now. A little bit of a shove there from Allgaier into the back of the 20, got him a little bit loose. Custer's able to shoot out in front, and here comes the 21 of Austin Hill. Yeah, that inside line is always hard to get going anyway. You're wanting to hit the gas so hard, but there just seems to be a little less grip down there. Diving into turn three. Side by side for second. And two and three wide behind them for position. Almost four wide there on the exit of the corner. I believe that was Sam Mayer that got down there. Here comes Allgaier. Allgaier is going to take second away from Hill. And when these fresh Goodyear tires are able to get that traction, the lower part of the racetrack is perfect. It's great. You just have to minimize the amount of, that you're using those because you can use these tires up in a hurry. You can go forward quickly, but all of a sudden, after about 10 laps, you're saying, where'd my race car go? Yeah, these Goodyear tires are like a block of cheese, Rick, and every time you run them across the grader, there's less available. And what DJ's <laughs> talking about is if you jump on that gas to clear that and you spin that tire a little bit, that's it. That percentage of tire life is never coming back. John Hunter Nemechek is going to clear the 21. Austin Hill. Now running back in the third spot. Here comes Josh Berry in the eighth as he has momentum. Dell Jr. running 19th. He's going to run where they're not. And that's all he can do right now is just be patient around the bottom. You saw he got a little close to the back of the 10. Looks like he got a little arrow tight at the top of the screen. You see. The double zero continues to lead all guys second as we see a little battle back here for fourth between the 20 the 8 and the 21. This is a big fight back here. So you saw right there another big thing we're going to talk about DJ is compromise. We're going to hear a lot of spay a lot of spotters say you know, a run on the top, and you have to determine if you're gonna leave him a lane, right? So the 26 right here, he has the 88 outside, the 11 outside of him, three wide bottoms could be very hard to accelerate. Dave. And Steve, you heard, uh, well, you didn't hear, but I was listening to his spotter last couple of laps, and it is nonstop right now, trying to give Junior all the information that he needs to choose the best line for himself. And that spotter this weekend for Junior, veteran Joey Meyer back at the helm on top of the roof, making sure he gives him the right places to go. You can see right there that that was his 
understanding of what he needs to do. He didn't try to press the issue. He didn't try to make it three wide going the middle where you have to turn the, the wheel so much that you're, you know, just like you, that cheese grater you're talking about, you're wearing out the front tires, taking that away. He let the things kind of come to him. Now he's got another run and he's going to make another pass, get another position and not abuse everything too much. And I know there's a lot for him to pick back up, but I will tell you, DJ and I was talking about this, Rick. If we get that long run in that final stage that we expect, you know, I know he doesn't run full time, but we're talking one of the best who have ever run the top. And I would love to see him on some 30, 40 lap tires showing some of these younger guys just exactly how easy you have to enter and how you get back to the throttle to extend that straightaway. Yeah, second of fall off in the lap time from their fastest time in five laps. So that's just how quickly these tires go away. And that's it. The harder you try to go right now, yeah, you want to make spots, you know, make these passes, move forward, but you just have to, if you'll just wait a little bit, be a little bit more patient, that'll pay off five times. You'll get cars a lot quicker, a lot easier. Here comes Allgaier. Things heating up up front as Cole Custer's running the higher line. Allgaier slides up the racetrack behind Cole Custer. He's going to lose a lot of ground with that. Well, that's what the accordion is going to look like. If the seven runs the bottom, he'll close in on entry. If he runs the top, he's going to lose on entry, just like the seven did right here. But now if you watch that top box, watch what happens for the seven down the back stretch. Running off the top, he's going to close back in. It's that accordion. You know, you might run the same lap time, but you're doing it in a totally different manner. We'll see what line he takes this time as Cole Custer stays up high. So does Allgaier. Yeah, just go right in his tracks right there uh, for a little bit. Till you can get to his bumper and see if he can make a mistake. This is impressive for Justin Allgaier right here. This has not been a good track for him. He needs just a solid run all day, get himself, find himself in a position late to really do something. He's never had a top five here. So winning is, yeah, even though that's why you come here, uh, just running and having a solid day is what he's at. So I picked on the man to our left because he was the first ever winner at the Miami racetrack, but it didn't look like this. It looked like Indianapolis. So so shocker, right. uh, you know, you want it, DJ. But the question I have is, have you ever had that track that just didn't suit you? Like yeah. no top fives for all guy. Is it just because you don't have the feel? Or what do you think it really is? As a crew chief, I've walked in many racetracks and lost. I just didn't know if it worked <laughs> for a driver. Yeah, it is exactly like that. And I had more than one, actually, if you believe that. But, uh, yeah, you find that, that you just don't ever get that feel that you need to find out you know, what it takes to get around here. You think you know, but until that happens. So, uh, yeah, there are just those places out there uh, that that's going to happen. Marty. So, DJ, to that point, Justin Allgaier told his crew chief, Jim Pullman, a few weeks ago, I don't want to go to Miami with the same setup we've had the last few years. I just feel like it doesn't work for me. So whatever it is, we need to do something different. See, what's that conversation like? And Jim Pullman going back to the notes and saying, hey, I can come with a little bit something different. And also, how nervous do you think Pullman was showing up this weekend with a brand new setup they had never tried? And then to be quick, got to make them all feel good. You know, Marty, that is a great update because it is nerve wracking to bringing something you're not used to. Now, the good news is we talk a lot about junior motorsports and the four cars. That's where four cars really have an advantage. The amount of notes that Jim can look through to decide what other drivers have found for success here, maybe what he himself in his career has found or worked on other teams that worked. But for sure, people think the race is nerve wracking for a crew chief. The sleepless night is the night before you go on the racetrack. Once you go on the racetrack, uh, which would have been Thursday night for old Jim Pullman. That's a sleepless night. Did you ever ask one of your drivers to suggest that? Because I had Todd Parrott to ask me one time when I suggested we do something different. He was like, okay, you got any ideas? It's <laughs> like, what are we looking for here? Give me a direction. I was Jimmy Johnson to check and out his teammate. If I want to try anything different, I just walk next door and see what they were doing. As you see right here, three wide. So that's good awareness and communication between the 88 and the spotter to allow the 48 to get there in the middle. You don't want to give up the spot, but you didn't have both lanes to slide up on exit. Kim. And Sheldon Creed in a little bit of a backward slide. Currently 13th after starting in the ninth position. And he told me he was really going to try and practice patience for this race and not be afraid to let cars pass and protect his stuff and then pass him on the longer run. So right now he's been quiet on the radio. Not sure if he's just not liking the car or if he's indeed practicing that patience he told me he was going to try and use. Creed holding on to the 12th position right now as things heating up in the top three. John Hunter Nemechek into the inside of the seven of Allgaier for second. After starting on the front row, John Hunter Nemechek trying to fight back. 
As we're riding along with the Toyota onboard and getting a very good view of that pass John Hunter Nemechek just made on Allgaier. So it's Custer and Nemechek, one and two once again, 14 laps into this race here at Miami. The official app of NASCAR Tracks has the latest race and event information from all of your favorite tracks. Search NASCAR Tracks in the App Store to download for free. Riding along with Dale Jr., and there could be a problem with playoff driver Sheldon Creed listening to the radio. Uh, I think the two's got something come out the rear end. Yeah, it's one. out of the two rear end. All right, they know. So we saw a little bit of fluid, it seems like, getting on the camera right here as he was following behind Sheldon Creed. Yeah, I'm trying to see exactly what it is. Obviously, there's some liquid coming out. Um, it's too late in the run to think it's anything like fuel related. I was looking at the rear bumper cover. I don't see where it says wheel and changing color. So I don't know if it's water or another substance. Kim, what do you got from down on pit road? Well, checked in with the team and they did ask Sheldon, is the car doing anything funny? What are your gauges doing? Sheldon said, everything seems fine. All of my gauges look good. Since then, no radio communication. So it seems to be business as usual for right now for Sheldon Creed. So now on this shot right here, it's hard to tell because of the flat black tail for the second time your gauges are good correct you know the wheel yeah, doesn't look like so oil 280 I mean, they run these cars pretty hot now normally what happens when you have some liquid it kind of blows up onto the tail uh and then the the grime from the racetrack sticks to the liquid and it changes colors actually funny story that's why um most cars do prefer to run a flat black tail like in the old 88 dale jr cars we would run black tails because it's very hard to see liquid so you might at least get to the yellow before you get black flagged and there's two cars the same way really hard to tell what it is they've asked him a couple times about his gauges so it doesn't sound like it's you know anything serious yet but definitely a concern we're gonna have to keep an eye on creed running in the 10th position right now and again i mentioned that earnhardt was behind him everything else looks fine dell jr's Ten running 16. thank you so creed still Moving forward, as a matter of fact, even if he does have some type of an issue. Yeah, the big concern is, you know, it's one thing if we had 24 to go in the race, but we have 24 to go in stage one, 179 to go in the race. So if it is a slow leak and something they'll see on the pit stop, uh, they'll have to come up with a plan to try to repair it. It can be something as simple as overfilled oil itself, and it can blow out the breather of the oil tank. That would make sense from kind of what they're talking about, DJ. Well, we'll just have to wait and see on the pit stop. How about last week for this guy? I mean, to get your first win in your hometown and then do it by 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Dominant performance for Riley Herbst last week, Kim. Yeah, and so what's their goal now? Crew chief Dad and Recibo told me not have any bad days for the next three races. They want to keep that momentum of confidence because that sets the tone for where they start the next season. Riley told me, yes, their car is good here. Probably not quite as good as it was last week in Vegas, but they will be competitive. Currently running in the seventh position. Marty, though, they are having a little bit of radio trouble on that 98 car. Kim, just three races left for Josh Berry in the Xfinity Series before he replaces Kevin Harvick in the Cup Series at Stuart Haas Racing. And you look at the next two racetracks as a shot for Berry, who has not won this year, to be able to maybe get that win. Miami, always so good at the mile and a half. But Martinsville, next weekday, that's the one they have circled. Berry has already won there, and he is so good at the short tracks. Parker Kligerman hasn't run an Xfinity race here in 10 years. He told me... I know what the truck feels like when it taps the wall. I know what the cup car feels like when it taps the wall. Back when I raced, they didn't have these composite bodies. So I got to be a little careful as I get right up there and learn how to run the high line here this afternoon. Kligerman running in that 15th spot right now, just in front of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Cole Custer's out front, has a one and a half second lead, a little slideways there out of the two of Sheldon Creed coming out for four. Yeah, right in front of Sheldon Cree. That's 25 of Brett Moffitt. Great qualifying run for the 25. The two is going to try to slide job up in front. Nope. I, I think that was a good decision. Closing laps of the race, maybe you try to slam the door there. But this early, I think you have no choice. Cree's been fast. As a matter of fact, fastest last three laps have been Sheldon Creed. So on the move, but you see the back end moving around quite a bit. 
Yeah, but he's doing what you have to do here to, to be successful as I've watched him. And he really worked at this yesterday in practice. And, and that was slowing his entry down just a little bit and then picking up the throttle quickly and driving it around the fence. And he, it seems to be that he's catching on. Now he's getting a little bit more time here in race conditions. Uh, it's whenever he goes down here that it makes things a little more difficult. So just a moment ago, the car loose on entry. Now you could give the wall a little more room than that on the entry, but <laughs> it is nice. I mean, to, to do it properly, and you know, we'll watch tomorrow some of the very best uh, in Tyler Reddick and, and Kyle Larson certainly are the two that come to mind at, at most. You know, they're right against that wall on the entry. That's how to utilize everything about running the wall. The very best is to do it on the, the very start of the corner. That's the difference. Most drivers, especially on Sunday, half or majority of the drivers today they can get right up against the wall in the middle and then some can figure it out on exit it's that first 500 feet of the corner that there is high and then there's kyle larson high and where they drive in literally um and if we go on board you'll see like the the wall almost turns back to your right you have to almost steer to your right a little bit just to go left it is an odd sensation to try to figure out a way to stay connected to the wall Right there, you see that the 25 of Moffat almost turns to the right at the end of the straightaway to never leave that wall. This time, the two's going to be able to slide him, but is the 25 going to cross him over? Yeah, that's a good move right there. That's what you have to do. Uh, now, that makes the tires a little bit mad when you slide across that much, but he accomplished what he needs to. I think he's faster than the 25 here. So, yeah, and he didn't really cut him off. He didn't make anybody mad. He made his tires mad for a second, but not the competitor. We can't make him mad. Uh, those two, Creed was in Moffat's wedding party when Moffat got married back in 2021. As we see, Allgaier has fallen back to that third spot. Nemechek was able to get by him and Allgaier about four seconds back from race leader Custer now, Marty. Yeah, good point, Rick. It wasn't 15 laps ago. Allgaier was contesting for the lead with Cole Custer. So what's going on? Three on the team, arc if you can. I already told you, man, I'm... I'm wrecking loose on entry. No way I can arc it more. But I would love to. I am so loose doing that, though. How about your brakes? Try them. No help at all. So, Steve, if you're Jim Pullman and you have this brand new setup, obviously it took off for Justin Allgaier. How do you now build longevity into it? Because clearly they're very free on entry. Well, that's going to be the challenge, right, Marty? So it's worked. You have the speed. Now the balance is going away. So now you have to figure out not only how to get the car to hold on more, but then what knob to change. Remember, when it's a brand new setup, they all don't react the same. If I have a setup that has a high cross weight or a big spring at a certain corner or something that makes the signature of this setup, well, that signature might need a different adjustment than something we're used to in the past. And you're actually making it worse going down there. It's hard to believe that as a driver, but you're making your problem worse. Allgaier, the veteran of the series, trying something new here at Homestead, Miami. Cole Custer still out front. Tonight, it's Big Ten football on NBC and Peacock. Second-ranked Michigan brings their undefeated 7-0 record into East Lansing to battle in-state rival Michigan State. Coverage beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. Here comes Saturday night. Things heating up. On the racetrack as Cole Custer still has a 1.3 second advantage over second place John Hunter Nemechek but Sheldon Creed has worked his way all the way up to fifth and battling with Sam Mayer maybe not making him happy here. I couldn't tell if he just got into the fence a little bit right here and just gave it a hard tug left to make sure yeah. he didn't get you know kind of pulled into the fence. Sam Mayer right on his rear bumper. He was saying thank you he wanted the top line anyway <laughs> i wasn't sure what happened live dj but you know sometimes if you get into the tire rick can almost literally pull you in uh kind of like dropping a tire off the side of the road you got to pull harder to get back on the asphalt you guys both said that you know this asphalt can make these tires angry well what about those two marks that we saw yeah. as he came off that that can't make these tires too happy not at all and he's paying the price for it right now because he's not he doesn't have the speed that he had before that big slide off of turn two how about it kim and for sam mayer we're seeing him jockeying for position back and forth with sheldon creed and his spotter kevin hamlin has come on the radio multiple times and reminded him to keep his rhythm do not race the other guys race the racetrack he said if you get too dicey with the two of sheldon creed it's going to allow the guys behind you to catch up so
So again, Kevin Hamlin, the spotter, a veteran spotter, playing a key role. We've documented it throughout the rest of the season about how crucial he is to Sam and Sam's headspace throughout the course of a race. When we talk about tire fall off, as we have just eight laps to go in stage one, and those tires getting angry as we see Sam Mayer even getting a little bit loose there and trying to get some grip. They're running 37 second laps now. They were running under 34 seconds to start this race. Yeah. So you think about that, over three seconds of loss per lap that these tires have fallen off. But last lap, this one car and the two car who are running right there, been battling, they were the two fastest cars there uh, in this front group. And so they were actually faster than what the leaders are at this point in time. One of Sam Mayer, looks like he tagged the wall also here just moments ago. Right there. So easy. Oh, that's, yeah. So easy to drive, Steve, is that what you're talking about? No, so easy to touch <laughs> the fence. It's actually those composite bodies that we were hearing about earlier. That's made a big difference because if that was an old steel body, you can only do it a couple times and you knock the sheet metal in on the right rear tire and that's normally the end of your day. Right up against the wall, these guys continue to run as the laps wind down. Cole Custer, now it's just under a second advantage that he has on John Hunter Nemechek. Points paid at the end of the stages. And for Allgaier, who's right in front of Sam Mayer, he's hoping for six smooth laps because both of those cars are running him down. The double zero, so far so good. He's led every lap of the race. Yeah, and the problem, if they are able to get to uh, the seven of Allgaier, because he can't enter the corner high, they might get to the outside of him and make that pass, even though Justin has moved up the racetrack, trying to take that uh, away from them right now. And this is where you get a little frustrated is the right word. So normally we talk about lab traffic. Well, the lab traffic's running the top. That's kind of forcing uh, the leader off the top. And this is that battle you were talking about, the seven of Allgaier, and the one has got right to his rear bumper. Yeah, look how much more speed he has, right? He got back in the throttle there. Cole Custer cannot be happy right now with the 44 of Jeffrey Earnhardt. And we're seeing fire coming out of the 28 on pit road. McLaughlin. Uh, having to go to the safety crew there. Cole Custer coming up on four laps to go in this stage. Marty. Cole Custer would love to lead all of those laps, but he also sees John Hunter Nemechek catching him, and he asks the team why. We know what he's doing different than me. Copy, I haven't seen anything really yet. Exact same line he's doing, one and two. Very similar in three and four, I'll let you know. I see that he does different. It looks like he rolls a little more speed in the three. Other than that, I don't see much. So, DJ, how sensitive is Homestead Miami and getting close to the wall? We know the speed is there. We also know the risk is there. Yeah, it really is. And, of course, both of these drivers, they, they don't seem to be challenging quite as much. Uh, but when you see someone in your mirror catching you, uh, you want to know what they're doing. Is there something that I can do to make things a little bit better? So, you know, this is the end of stage one. Uh, make the most out. I know Cole Custer wants all 10 of those points that he can get. Uh, you know, he might take all of that away with the win this afternoon, so just be careful. Part of the big four as we see laps being turned at about 37 flat for Sam Mayer, but John Hunter Nemechek over 38 seconds the last time by, so a second slower. Yeah, that lap by Sam Mayer was unbelievable. He caught the seven and kind of went right by him, where the two has kind of got stuck behind the seven. Now the one's in traffic. Yeah, and, and we've seen the double zero and the 20, uh, Cole Custer and John Hunter Nemechek, they are not challenging the wall right now. They're out front. They don't have to get up there and put themselves in that position as we see Sheldon Creed take that uh, four spot away from Justin Allgaier. Allgaier decides to cross him back over. We'll see if he can do the same move to Sheldon Creed as they go into turn three. Now he's going to make a big run down in here because Creed gets out of the throttle. This is what you do up top. You get out early but get a big run on the exit. Allgaier not able to get back into the gas as quickly. And so Creed and Moffitt go by. Yeah, it's two points in one corner. That's not what Allgaier wanted to see at all. Not that he had a lot of options. And the double zero is thinking, I got about a mile left in this lap. And 
It's Sam Mayer got right by the 20. We, you just mentioned a 37 flat. Just watch this one car right here. I know he's probably too far back, but this last corner can be all you need to have ultimate optimism for the race ahead. Watch the one put it right on the fence, the double zero running down a lane. I mean, he's going to close in 20 car lengths in the last set of corners. Coming out of four to end stage one, it's Cole Custer. He's going to grab that stage win. Fifth stage win already this season. For Cole Custer again, this is the side of his first race win in the Xfinity Series. Riley Herbst, Austin Hill, Kaz Grala, and Daniel Hemrick rounding out the top ten. So Custer, while setting a blistering pace out on the racetrack, the 28 of C.J. McLaughlin having fire issues on pit road. NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR on USA is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Progressive. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. All right, Steve, pit stops about ready to take place, and pit stalls were selected earlier this week. Well, so John Hunter Nemechek had a mechanical issue last week in Las Vegas in practice, and for that reason didn't get to qualify. Now, he recovered to finish second, no problem. But because of that lack of qualifying, he was assigned a pit stall at the end. So here is the 20 right here. Why does that matter? Because in front of him is the 18 who will come in around him. If he got to pick his own pit stall, he'd be down near an opening or somewhere else. So gonna be very interesting with the 20 running third, the 18 of the Sammy Smith running 14th, he's gonna come around the 20. 20 is really gonna to have to stop back to be able to get out and not get blocked in. And here come all the lead lap cars onto pit road. There's 26 of them, Kim. Including Sheldon Creed, he said it was too free, lacked lateral grip. Then once he bumped the wall, he said he got tighter. Top right of your screen, Sam Mayer, what a good run for him. On the free side, he said, I'm so fast, though, so I don't want to take too much speed off of it with a big of adjustment. So Marty Lindley, air pressure, he said, on four fresh Goodyear tires, no go fuel, Dave. These pit boxes are on the larger side, so they stop John Hunter Nemechek short. Looks like he'll have plenty of room to exit. They'll tighten up the race car, Marty. Dave, a perfect stage one for Cole Custer. He's led every lap to this point. He said he's too tight to roll the speed in three and four, and he can't get that last little bit on the high line like everybody else Custer's team also delivers on pit road they come in with the lead and they leave with the lead Rick yeah Sheldon Creed he's been making some moves on the racetrack well his team also making some moves gained a spot there it's the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs the contender boats 300 from Homestead Miami Speedway we saw a dominant performance from Cole Custer, so that's the obvious one right now. But who else is impressing you through stage one? Yeah, yeah I think you have to look at Sam Mayer and Sheldon Creed. I mean, that was really impressive where they came from uh, during that run to get themselves right up into the mix. And one of those two wins, oh, my goodness, the things for the playoffs really get sh uh, shaken up going to Martinsville next week. Well, the two on the other side, the seven of all got good speed early, kind of lost the handling on old tires. And Austin Hill... He lost three spots in about three laps. Then he had a big gap behind him, so ended up working okay. But you have to wonder what kind of speed the 7 and the 21 can have after adjustments. We also have to keep our eye on the 2. There was mention of possibility of fluid, uh, but we haven't heard anything of that. And he had a great run there toward the end. Take a look at the points that they earned in Stage 1. As you see, Cole Custer winning the most points you can with the 10 points for the win of the stage. Sam Mayer, 9. Nemechek, 8. Sheldon Creed, 7. Allgaier gaining 5. As far as playoff drivers go, Austin Hill with 3. And yeah, one missing. Chandler Smith was unable to score points, and all that does is make the task ahead just a little bit harder. Dave, what's going on with the 0-8? Well, Rick, uh, folks will remember in pre-race we told the story of how Mason has overcome his uh, fear of talking uh, because he has a stutter uh, by working hard at it. Now, one of the things you have to do as a race car driver is deliver information clearly to your crew chief. This was before he just stopped. Almost undrivable. It's just I go in the corner, put off the gas, it gets really, really tight. And then, like, every time I touch the gas, like, I don't know if it's going to shove the nose 15 feet up the track or if it's going to spin out. I just have no idea. 
so that was him before the pit stop. They gave him adjustments to make up for that. It wasn't great news, but it was very clearly communicated. You never know he have a stutter. Yeah, Dave, and of course, uh, tomorrow is International Stuttering Awareness Day. Mason Massey out of Douglasville, Georgia, uh, wanted to make everyone aware you can reach your goals even if you have something that is trying to block you from that. You think about what he's done in his career of racing. He's won over 300 races that he's been a part of, 11 championships, 10 track records. Uh, really impressive what Mason Massey has done. As a matter of fact, one of the first races that he ran in, he was so nervous to do the interview he backed off and didn't win the race on purpose. And so you think about that, how much he has grown in his racing career. Yeah, just incredible story. And I'll tell you what, that was a detailed description of what he was going through. I don't know, Steve, as a crew chief, you can fix all of that, but yeah. you can try. Getting ready for the restart. Sam Mayer now on the inside of Cole Custer. Will Sam Mayer have anything for the double zeros? We get ready to start stage two here at Homestead Miami. Custer Mayer, Creed, Nemechek, all back, are all a part of the top five. Wheel spin, second car on the outside, the two of Creed definitely didn't want to accelerate. Custer coming back to the bottom though. Dives to the inside in turn three, but momentum sticking with the one of Mayer. Mayer running it right up against the wall on exit. They're still side by side for the lead. And that right there is the first lap that Cole Custer hasn't led here at Homestead, Miami. Mayer was in front of him by two one hundredths of a second. Now, Cole Custer back out front. And you need to be very careful here. I know you want to lead this race, but we've said it the whole first stage. Tire life, tire life, tire life. If you get <laughs> so preoccupied with that other driver that you overdrive your car, give it about 15 laps and you will wish you hadn't. See what it's done for Sam Mayer. He tucks in behind the double zero there. Ride for a bit. Yeah. Ride for a bit. That's that's the thing to do is just do what you're doing. Save these tires for a little bit. He showed that he's willing to go up there and run that wall for the majority of a run. Cole Custer did not show us that he was ready to go up there and do that. So just take it easy here for a little bit. Here comes Justin Allgaier once again, kind of like he did in the first stage there. Right. You wonder if this setup doesn't, you know, it's one of two things. Justin Allgaier knows what he's doing, right? But if this setup fires off good, does it have him overdrive the cars that what's hurting the tires or is it going to fall off either way? Yeah. I'm not sure they know with this brand new setup as Marty reported in the first stage. They're trying something different this race. Uh, it works on the short run. It's hurt on the longer, but I love that coaching ride for a bit doesn't mean i want you to care less just just ride just take a deep breath for me it's like when a caddy tells his golfer to step off the thing the wind blows or the crowd makes noise hey get your composure back in and just settle in so now all he's not settling in at all he's trying to take second away from sam Mayer, his teammate at junior motorsports and he takes that position away he now sets his sights once again on cole custer yeah, but you could just see as he was doing that, as he came off of turn four, he powered up really good, but you could just see the back just skate across that asphalt, and as he's doing that, that's just taking the rubber away from those two rear tires. Can this be the youngster, Sam Mayer, being patient and letting the two veterans drive away? <laughs> uh, let's find out, Kim. Well, you heard Jeff Burton in our Countdown to Green show talk about how abrasive this track is on tires. We're documenting it right now. Here's how the one team described what happens throughout the course of the run. You know when you throw a toy for your dog on a hardwood floor and they try to take off and they just scooby-doo? Like, midway through the run, that's really what this looks like. So you got to manage that. And as long as you keep maintaining at least that momentum center off down that hill, you'll be good. So that was a really good first stage. I'll just keep hammering away. Yes, sir, scooby-dooby-doo. And again, Kevin Hamlin coming on throughout the course of this run, reminding him, don't burn up your stuff, just be patient. So we are seeing this young driver use his head here and try and be patient throughout this tire run. Junior Motorsports has assembled a very good group around the youngster, Sam Mayer, right? Well, up on top of the, that was Kevin Hamlin we heard on top of the roof, a cup spotter. Great information. And how about his delivery? Sounds like he's sitting in the car with him, just calm as can be. And then Marty Lindley, known so well around the short tracks of the Southeast. He, and he has that, it reminds me a little bit of that Tony Uri Sr. Dale Jr. vibe, right? Like Martin Lindley, he's a veteran, and he looks at Sam Mayer as a race car driver, as a youngster, and he coaches him with authority. 
and gives him some structure, but also really respects his talent. You can see that that union really working well all year. I will have to say that might have been the most unique description that I've heard. It and painted a great picture. It did, it? though. Yes, absolutely. I was Googling Scooby-Doo. I didn't know it was good. <laughs> so Scooby-Doo, like, sliding? Like, uh, just mystery machine? Like, where are we going with it? Everybody that's a dog owner has seen <laughs> that before, where you throw a toy on a it's wood floor, that dog takes off trying to run, and the paws just slide. So a great analogy there as we see John Hunter Nemechek trying to get to the inside of the one of Sam Mayer, trying to take this position away. It's the battle for third. Yeah, the good thing is that Sam Mayer lived what they're telling him and what he saw during that run, that was his car. It wasn't watching someone else. He saw what his car is capable of that could have him the lead towards the end of this stage. Uh, and then who knows you know, what might happen at the end of the race. So it's not something they're having to sell to him. I feel like he's almost goading the 20 into running behind <laughs> yeah, the line. Yeah. No, 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 go down there. Bring your <laughs> tires up a little bit. I'm just, because watch him. He gives yeah. him the line. He gasses it up through the middle right here. Just enough to try to fill the hole. The 20 is going to slide up this time. The one's going to allow him in. But, you know, it's almost like he's doing it with a smile. Well, a lot of confidence from the young Sam Mayer now at just 20 years old, able to get to victory lane three times uh, and has been one of the drivers that has had so much momentum. But John Hunter Nemechek, he knows how to find victory lane. Already seven wins for Nemechek on the 2023 season. But it's Cole Custer who's out front here in Miami. With nearly 6,000 stores and over 17,000 auto care centers across the country, Napa has America's largest network of parts and care. Here to be the fuel that keeps you firing on all cylinders. Right now at Napa, get a five-quart jug of Napa Full Synthetic Motor Oil for only $19.99. Or claim a prepaid $5 Visa card when you buy any Napa Gold Air Filter or Napa EnviroShield Cabin Air Filter. <laughs> a first child can be stressful. So to make things a little less overwhelming, Progressive is offering special rewards for new parents. But we're not stopping there. We think even cat ladies deserve rewards. Left-handed people. People with birthdays. Recent grads who can't move on with their lives. All of them. And these people we found on the internet can be automatically enrolled in the Progressive Loyalty Program and get special rewards. Even people who just got back from Europe. It's actually pronounced croissant. I was just in Europe. The Sonic 2 for 7 deal lets you choose from the Sonic cheeseburger, chicken sandwich, or foot-long chili cheese coney. Any two for seven bucks. Because that friend that says they only want one bite never just wants one bite. Sonic 2 for 7 deal. When it comes to the wrong mattress, you snooze, you lose. At Ashley, we've got you covered with top mattress brands at winning prices. And you can snooze now and pay later with 0% interest for 60 months. Make every snooze count. Shop in-store or online today. I watched my first race yesterday. You're on the team, kid. It's orientation day. Hey, new guy. Let's get you up to speed. Lunch time. <laughs> Your workspace is ready. Looks like you got a corner office. Be part of something greater. Toyota. Let's go places. In the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs, names are made here. And here. At the line. And definitely here. But with the championship on the line, your name can only take you so far. A will to win, a hunger for speed, and a whole lot of attitude. That's how to see your name in bright lights. The NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs. You can represent your favorite driver during the playoffs and take advantage of amazing deals at the NASCAR shop. Check out the greatest selection of T-shirts, hats, die casts, and much, much more. It's at NASCAR.com slash shop. Cole Custer out to a eight-tenth of a second lead over Allgaier now, who's running in that second spot. John Hunter Nemechek is third. Sam Mayer fourth. And Riley Herbst, last week's winner, is running in the top five. 
Moments ago, we saw Chandler Smith, who's running 10th right now. Look at this on the inside of Josh Berry coming off of turn four. Yellow, yellow, yellow. And a caution has come out now. As the 74 has spun in turns one and two. So Dawson Cram goes around. Yeah, I'm all right. And oh, that's no. a bad situation. Yeah, that's uh, left rear wheel is off for Dawson Cram. Well, and on the car, it looked like I still saw some wheel studs. So only one way that thing comes off. Well, two ways, I guess. The wheel breaks or the, all those lug nuts fall off. And it didn't look like the wheel had broke. No, it looked like there was a center section to the wheel here. Yeah. We'll take a little bit of a look as it it's gonna bounces hit the inside off. wall. Yeah. Maybe we'll take a look at it. Oh, it's going to come back out and show us something. Interesting time right here, though, right? Because mm. with the tire limits, you really want to save. So here's the thing. You have four sets of tires in your pits. One at the end of stage one, one at the end of stage two, two for the last 110 laps, knowing you're going to get some yellows. But I, I will say that, you know, in the cup race tomorrow, this is a no-brainer. Yeah. You're coming to get four tires. With the limits, I don't know if anyone can afford to, uh, you know, I don't know if anybody can afford to pit here, but think about Chandler Smith who missed stage points. If he comes and puts on tires here, he wins this stage by a mile. Dawson Cram, the 22-year-old being attended to by the AMR safety crew there. Here he's sideways and the wheel's off. There you see it up against the wall. So lost that wheel. So, so we'll see. I think pit road is open this time. Like I said, I just don't think the leaders really. I mean, it would yeah. be, man, I don't think you could burn a set now. But will a Chandler Smith, you know, will somebody gamble and say, you know what? It could go bad later, but I need to do something to try to score some points. Although being a t set of tires down would be a bad, bad, bad situation later in the race. Yeah. Chandler Smith's going to need more than just tires. Quite a few <laughs> are making their way past the entrance to pit road. Just a few takers. So we'll reset the field and get the line back up for the restart here at Homestead, Miami. Still 21 to go in stage two. NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR on USA is brought to you by Credit One Bank, a credit card company. Getting ready for the choose and one to go before the restart here. That looks like they're going to be restarting with 18 laps to go in stage two. Currently, Dale Earnhardt Jr. running in the 14th spot. Let's dial him up on the radio seat. Hey, Junior, it's the booth. You got a copy? Yes, sir. All right, well, first things first, you're coming to one to go in the choose, so don't let me talk over that, but we're listening in. Give us a little update on how the race has been. Hold on, let my spotter tell me how many he's going to pick the outside, and I'll talk to you right after we make that decision. All right, well, let's listen in. This is Joey Meyer on top of the roof, probably going to count off. All right, one lane leader outside. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. There you go, come on. All right, that was good to listen to. Give us a quick update before green. Well, we fired off really good at the start of the race, moving forward pretty good, real happy with the car. Then I got a little bit tight, and uh, we made some adjustments to try to make our car better, and I think uh, we need to undo those. But right now, fight and turn in the middle of both ends. You know, when you fight and turn at a low grip track, you're going to be in trouble. You kind of got to hold pace here. we got to hold our tractor as best we can for the next 20 laps here, get another adjustment on this car so we can't make it better for the end. All right, now remember, restart on old tires here. Nice and easy. Don't light them things up. Sounded good, Joey. No chance I don't spin the tires. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Fast Pro Shop. Johnny Morris was on the Dale Jr. download this week on Tuesday. He's on the hood of this car, longtime supporter of Dale's. And to be quite honest, just a huge supporter of NASCAR. Johnny, if you're listening, thanks for everything you do for NASCAR and uh, giving us this great view on the 88. You know what was fun? Uh, they shot a piece uh, with Isla fishing. Uh, so Dale Jr., Dale and Amy's uh, oldest daughter, Isla, out fishing. It did feel so good. So excited. It did feel good to tell him what to do one more time. Or don't spin those <laughs> tires. And he said, not a chance. Getting ready for the restart here. It'll be 18 to go in stage two. 
Justin Allgaier getting into the back. He had a good run there. Cole Custer couldn't get his up to speed. Allgaier had a good run, uh, but then got hit in the back. Look at this chaos through one and two. They are everywhere. So John Hunter Nemechek said, thank you, boys. He was third in line, and the first two took that outside lane, and here John Hunter is leading the race. By two car links right now as Sam Mayer in the one using that low line trying to clear the double zero of Cole Custer. It's not going to oh. make that complete. He had his chance a little before that, probably a little early to, to do that. Don't want to make him mad right at this point. Now. Late in the race, he would have definitely shot up. How about Parker Kligerman in the 48 running up here inside the top four right now? Yeah, I watched him that last run. He really got himself going around at the top of the racetrack right against the wall and was making some really good time and obviously had a good restart here. Allgaier trying to make up some ground once again as Mayer has the momentum. They're right behind the double zero of Cole Custer. Allgaier can't get to the inside of the 48. Now he dives back down to the bottom of the racetrack as does Austin Hill. Will he slide up? Allgaier staying all the way down at the bottom, and he's going to clear that 48 of Kligerman. Dave. Rick, when I talked to Parker before the race, he talked about the wall and running it, and he said, for me, it's a go-to thing. I'll go to it when the time is right. Early on, it was not, but you guys noticed it late in that run in this stage. He is making time on the top line. He's confident with it now. He's uh, going forward. You know, the only thing better than making time on the top is making time with new tires because you feel like Superman on the racetrack and the Derek Krause in the 11 you see him right side of your screen on the bottom of the racetrack you see on the left side the brand new tires he's up to fifth I mean it should be an easy stage win I think for Derek Krause brand new tires but just remember he now has a set less than the rest of the field so you want to make them work I mean he runs right at the bottom like I mean like he's in a different class a race car has so much more <laughs> yeah his last lap under 35 seconds and the only one to run down in that bracket. It's like we're IMSA racing. Right now we have a prototype of the GT class is what we have. New tires and used. I mean, look at this right here. Yeah. Last lap, nearly four, almost five miles an hour faster. He, that's two in one corner. This is what it looked like when DJ was unlapping himself that day at Indy. <laughs> yeah, it's fun when things are happening. You have a good car and, and you know, it just shows how much the, the tires matter here and, and how quickly they go away and how much uh, ground you can gain. So uh, that's why the, tomorrow the Cup guys are glad that they have a lot more tires to work with. Well, and this is why we were thinking Chandler Smith might yeah. have tried it yeah. and win this stage for the 10 points, but now flip it. If you get the wrong yellow late, you have no chance no at the chance. end of the race. So I like that the Chandler Smith, I could have gone either way. Um, you know, I think that's a true coin flip for the, for the other call it car but uh, right now it's Derek Krause he's going to drive right off the front of this field 13 to go Kim that 11 has to feel really good right now absolutely Steve with those fresher tires and remember he's never run here in Xfinity he's got some truck experience here but this is his first time in an Xfinity series car at Homestead Miami Speedway and crew chief Jason Trincherry told me he's typically a bottom feeder so we talk about these young drivers at Homestead Miami Speedway they wanted him to use this race to learn to learn the high line so they continue to encourage him not to stay stuck to the bottom, Marty. Kim, I've heard the word patience used by our booth and drivers more today than I've ever heard here at Homestead Miami Speedway. And it's funny because this morning, that's the word Cole Custer used. He will run the top in three and four, DJ, but not in one and two. He told me, I'm going to bide my time. I don't need to be up there right away, which is exactly what Dale Jr. said in the pre-race. So patience, DJ, where does that rank in your vocabulary here at Homestead Miami? Yeah, I used to tell people a lot of times as I was talking to groups whenever we had hospitalities for UPS and, and Coca-Cola and others. And I would talk about race drivers being patient. And they couldn't understand that, what that meant. It looks like you're just wide open all the time. But you have to be that. When your tires are going to go away, you can, like I say, you can make speed uh, very quickly. But, but you're going to pay the price at the other end. I like the way that Cole Custer is going about this. He has a really fast race car. And we've got a whole other stage to go whenever they're going to pay, give away the trophy and pay the, all the points. Parker Retzlaff currently 34th a lap down, and that's because a few laps ago, running 21st, and, and this is what we're talking about with patience, and it's just easy to do, right? He just gets a little high, and 
I don't know if he has an issue that causes him to get into the wall or if he just gets in the wall first, but either way, 31 had to come to pit road and then the two run on the top. Dale's gonna love that because he'd be the first guy to hit you if you pull up in front of him running the top right here. So that is basically the two run of the top, the 88 run on the bottom, slides up, no harm, no foul, but Creed giving the old, hey man, I'm back here, buddy. So uh, <laughs> how about giving me a little space on corner exit? That's one of Sam Mayer though with nine to go. We saw patience, back to that word again, earlier in the stage, first five or eight laps, and I think if it would have gone green, maybe had a better chance of paying off. I'm wondering if the cycle, the cooling off under the yellow has helped some of the guys in front of him. Gullick Racing has thrown the younger driver, Derek Kraus, behind the wheel, and he's out front. A lot of people are wondering, who's Derek Kraus? Well, uh, he was the youngest driver to win in the ARCA Midwest Tour uh, in its history back in 2016, and right now he's only 22, so you think back, he was 15 years old when he was able to get to victory lane there. I mean, it's, that's a name I hear a lot when I walk through the Xfinity Series garage. Um, just... When you hear a name that many times, you just wonder what it's going to look like next year. We'll see if he ends up in a full-time ride, but we're hearing a lot of whispers for opportunity for Kraus. We'll see if that pays off. 2017, Canon Pro Series West Rookie of the Year, West Champion in 2019. And now with tire strategy, he's put the 11 out front with seven laps to go here in this stage. Steve, is that a possibility of a winning strategy for this team if they can come off of pit road and hold this lead? Well, the problem is, you know, if it runs green in the final stage, it could be. But if there's any sort of caution in that final stage, they don't have that extra set of tires to put on. So that's going to be the problem. But can it end up being that way? It absolutely can. Yeah, how about Kyle Sieg here? Has driven himself with these new tires up to the fifth spot. Uh, obviously, his brother, Ryan, uh, been racing in this uh, series a lot longer. Uh, but the first full season for, for Kyle Sieg here, doing an outstanding job. No, that has to be a lot of fun uh, to get out there and, you know, mix it up. And, you know, he went up there and passed Justin Allgaier. Hey. Yeah, running up front obviously has to be way more oh, fun God. than that, that uh, hornet's nest that, they run in back from about 12th all the way to 28th. Allgaier has fallen back now to the sixth spot as Kyle Sieg has passed him. But here comes Allgaier with a little bit of momentum. Now we see Parker Kligerman trying to get by Austin Hill here using that high line. Yeah, they've been battling throughout this stage mostly, but certainly since uh, the restart. You can see Justin Allgaier there take that position back. What's going on with the 21, Dave? Just okay, DJ. And this whole race has been about him finding his comfort level with that top lane. You see him slide back up there now behind Kligerman. This was radio just after, whoa, bump from Riley Herbst there. Let's listen to the end of this radio just after stage one. Uh, if we're going to give up points, we need to do it because we're racing, not because we're driving it off the fence and having to pit to change tires and go and laugh down and to try to, to figure it out. We just we don't need to get ourselves into stupid spots. They tried him so many different ways to get him in the high line, and it just wasn't working. DJ, as a driver, when you hear that, I think you're, they're just saying to you, driver, where you feel comfortable, we'll try to make it better there. Yeah, you know, you appreciate that and, and the, you know, the efforts that they're trying to tell him. But I, I'll say this in the driver's defense. If he needs to be up there, because I'm telling you, in stage three, when it comes time to get everything that you possibly can and make a decent day out of this, you're going to have to be up here against the wall. So you can't be adjusting your race car to run on the bottom uh, as right now. you got to figure out what it takes for you to get up there and be competitive. Cole Custer not able to complete the pass on John Hunter Nemechek. Nemechek holding on to that second spot. Again, the lap's winding down here in stage two, less than three to go. Well, look, we talk about this patience. It's very easy to run out of that in a hurry here. Yeah, you think your tires go away quickly? Your patience can go away a lot quicker than that. <laughs> and sliding up and very tight there as Riley Herbst on the outside of that 45 and Leland Honeyman 
well, trying to make these tires work for him. Yeah, so we talked about Derek Krause and what the guys are doing on the lead lap. Well, what Honeyman did is he came and got tires because he's now racing. He's in a tight battle with Ellis and Emerling. Uh, for the free pass. So there is another whole race, and this, this lead lap can be the completely different different maker for the race, right? This could be the difference in a good day or an average day. So right here, that 45. Behind him on the top, that 43. That's Ryan Ellis. That is the battle for the three pass. This is the final lap. There's those drivers continuing to fight for that free pass position. But it's Derek Kraus with the fresh tires, and he's made them work. Derek Kraus in the 11. And he's going to hold on to claim his first ever stage win. It's going to happen here at the end of stage two. Oh, There's a big wiggle there out of Custer. But Kraus gets the win. Then it's John Hunter Nemechek and Cole Custer, Sam Mayer, all playoff drivers, grabbing some very important stage points, as does Allgaier. And Frankie Kerr's call for the new tires got Leland Hungerman their free pass position, so the 45 will be back on the lead lap. Stage two completes. It's Derek Krause winning this stage. Now they'll come to pit road back into the hands of the crew. Tomorrow, Sunday night football. The Miami Dolphins are on the road. They're facing the Eagles in Philadelphia. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern with Football Night in America on NBC and Peacock. And guys, I'm uh, telling you, the yards that are going to be put up there. Oh, Miami number one right now, just under 500. Philadelphia number two in yards per game. Over. Yep. <laughs> Online on the quarterbacks. Over. I mean, listen, not, and talk about speed. I saw a graph about like the fastest plays or, or players yep. and Miami had like eight of the ten or nine of the ten <laughs> so much speed on that offense a lot of speed and a lot of speed on pit road here let's go down to pit stops for Sam Mayer top left he said coming off the throttle I just get too tight tight in the middle is the biggest problem he actually got the wall just a little bit Sam asked to be freed up two numbers you saw that chassis adjustment for fresh Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel Dave nine stage points for John Hunter Nemechek still two free so he'll get a wedge adjustment air pressure adjustment and a cough drop Marty <laughs> a cough drop Dave well the last adjustment really helped Justin Allgaier but he said it's only 75 percent of what we need we still need more front turn and then for Cole Custer 18 stage points in the bank for that team said it fired off better but gets too tight running the wall keep freeing it up and the pit crew delivered as well how about that look at those top two Rick gaining a bunch of spots here on these stops big for Custer and Allgaier grabbing a couple spots as they will put themselves up front for the restart here in southern Florida the weather always beautiful sports city and so much to enjoy when you're down here in the Miami area It's Xfinity today and tomorrow, the Cup Series on NBC. It all starts with countdown to green at 2 o'clock, 2.30. The second race of the round of eight for the Cup Series. Who's going to join Kyle Larson in the championship four? And it all gets wrapped up with NASCAR America post race at 6 o'clock. Again, that stream live on Peacock. Let's go to the Peacock pit box. All right, Jeff, have all the right adjustments been made as it gets a little bit loud with those guys coming by you. But who looks like they could be the favorite coming to the checker today? Well, to me so far, it's been a three-way battle between Buster, Nemechek, and Mayer. The question I've got is the last that the last four races, three of those have ended with late race restarts. Yes. So your car might be good on a long run, but if you get that late race caution, you better be able to take off fast. And we don't know who that is yet. And we don't know who that is because we've seen Mayer, the longer they run, he pulls back to the front. He's able to go. We look at Custer. Uh, we look at 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 at, at um, Nemechek. Those guys are, are pretty consistent. The two guys that has been working have been working with Annette so far is Justin Algaier and Austin Hill. They fall like a rock. The only thing that saves them are the stages. And you mentioned stages. Let's take a look at the stage points and who has gained those points today. So Cole Custer. 18, Nemechek 17, Mayer 16, Algar 11, Creed 7, and Hill 5.
field two by two as we get ready to start the final stage from Homestead Miami. Custer and Allgaier. Good pit stops. They're restarting up front. Allgaier on the inside trying to make the move early. Here comes Sam Mayer in the one as well. Allgaier drifting up the racetrack but doesn't have that double zero cleared contact in the back. The 16's around. Get a roll when you can. Two cars involved, one of them being that 16 of Chandler Smith. Oh, Brett Moffat having such a good day. Qualified up front, ran up front, scored some stage points, six on the day. Chandler Smith, you kind of said it, DJ, just wasn't just wasn't the day the 16 yeah. needed to kind of get back in this playoff picture and this is gonna in my opinion take them all the way to a must win next week at Martinsville so much damage to the right front uh, and the front of this entire number 16 take another look at what happens yeah they're three wide off the corner at least oh you see it looks oh. like Krause and is that the nine of Jones yeah yeah, yeah. It's like he kinda... got loose and came down didn't he Oh, here's a good look right here. So the 11. Yeah, it's hard to tell from that angle, but it does look like the nine's coming down. It's off the wall quite a bit I can't believe there. he's just turning down on purpose. Yeah, so either yeah. he got loose or didn't realize there was three below them. This would be a great angle to see what happens to the nine. So you're looking at that black hood, yellow car. They almost just kind of get stuck together. Kind yeah. of just an odd situation. and. Isn't that how it would always work? Those two get stuck together, and the 16 is the one that gets spit out of line. The dominoes fall wrong here for Chandler Smith, playoff driver. Yeah, look at that, and from that angle, you can't put that on the nine. Nope, nope, from that angle. Here's our board. Three wide, three, but spin, spin, come keep on. High, 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 high. Caution, caution, caution. Four wide for 10th just doesn't seem to. I mean, I'll be honest, when I watch these restarts, I can't believe this doesn't happen every time. Um, but that last shot down the straightaway, I think the nine was holding his line. I wonder if the, the middle car didn't maybe get surprised by somebody to his yeah. left and just move up. Not real sure. Marty. Yeah, Rick, obviously Chandler Smith's vision uh, a little bit uh, hindered by the seat rest in there, but he said, what was the 11, his teammate, Derek Krause, thinking that he couldn't see the 9 was there as well? And now the point situation is going to go sideways here for Chandler Smith and his race team. They obviously have that right front damage you mentioned, Rick, but they also said they have a left front tire rub as well. So going to have to patch this up. It looks like they'll be in a must-win situation next week at Martinsville if they want to make the championship four. You know, coming into this race, Chandler Smith was only 15 points behind that cut line. And now after all of this happening, uh, as they're running, he's 48 points back. And very unfortunate situation there. Even after Noble Jack, the uh, Smith family introducing their second son. Uh, that was on Thursday morning, but this is not the way he wanted this race to go. Next Saturday on USA, the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs will continue from Martinsville Speedway, the paperclip. It's the last chance to clinch a spot in the championship for that race coverage beginning at 3.30 in Eastern. We talked about must-win situations. Possibly that is where we will see the 16 of Chandler Smith. He's 52 points below the cut line right now, a guy who's comfortably above the cut line, the 20 of John Hunter Nemechek, Dave. And Rick, I mentioned a cough drop before the last pit stop. Here was the radio that gave me the clue. The last lateral grip I have on exit, just chase the right rear. We'll make, uh, we'll make a, we'll put the wedge in it here. We got a cough drop tape to your water bottle here if you want it. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That would be awesome because he has a cold. Where did he pick that up? Well, it could have been the zoo right down here in Miami. Zoo Miami with the family on Friday. Took Taylor and Penelope and Aspen to the uh, zoo. Had a great time. I talked to Taylor right before John hopped into the car and I asked her, was there anything uh, bizarre about it? The giraffes were fine, she said, but when we got to the elephants and they started talking to each other, yeah, right there. Aspen was freaked out, did not like the elephants talking. She was okay to look at them, just didn't like the sounds.
I mean, our man Mama got in the shot too in the family shot. I like that. Can you get the? Can you get a cold from animals? Like giraffe, that? I think it was. The giraffe. No, is, he, was, gonna, he was in there too close. Hey, Rick, I think, I'm just going to let you the know what's, public. what's going on for the last five or seven years, Rick. I'm not joking about anybody getting sick from anything. <laughs> no jokes over here. <laughs> yeah. Points as they run and where they run. John Hunter and Imachek plus 50 above the cut line because Cole Custer is right now out front, uh, scored as the leader. Allgaier 19 above. Austin Hill eight points above. So a little bit tightening up there as far as at that cut line sam mayer just eight points back as they continue to work on chandler smith's number 16 before they send him out so chandler smith playoff driver gets caught up in this one big contact there with the two of sheldon creed as well we'll keep our eye on that car too You're watching the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs from Homestead Miami Speedway. It's the Contender Boats 300. A lot of boats you'll see there around the area of uptown and downtown Miami. As we get ready for the restart here, Allgaier on the inside, Cole Custer on the outside. Allgaier has shown some strength on the bottom of the racetrack here. We'll see if he can do it again. Under 100 laps to go, 97 now as we get the green flag. Three wide and four wide as they go to turn one. Once again, a great restart. Allgaier out in front. We'll see if he can hang on to that spot. There was a lot of speedy drive put down here in three and four, so let's see how they navigate through here. Sam Mayer all the way to the bottom of the racetrack. He's going to try to get by that double zero of Cole Custer. Gets up beside him as they come off of turn four. Now ducks in behind. John Hunter Nemechek to the bottom of the racetrack. I like the fact that this one car, Sam Mayer, he likes it up there against the wall, but a lot of times after, on a restart, after you've got some laps on the tires, you don't need to worry about going down to the bottom. Uh, your tires are going to be coming back, so go like your tires, have some time on them, and utilize that wall and, and make it your friend right there. Make it your friend. I, was, I like, I like I was, that approach. Yeah, I was getting ready to say, we're going to quote that. <laughs> DJ just said, make the wall your friend as Mayer goes to the bottom of the racetrack now and will slide right up in front of the double zero of Cole Custer. Slide job worked to perfection there, but here comes Cole Custer on the crossover move. Yep, I think the one's got the preferred line here, uh, getting back to the corner, although Cole Custer showed a lot of speed right there and was able to take that spot back. He said, I, I want to be second as he throws it back up in front of the one, but Sam Mayer, all right, are these guys just tearing the tires up racing sure. for the second spot yeah but it's time to go win now so you got to try to get all the track position do everything that you possibly can right here yeah you, know, you can control things better if he's in front you know if he can get to the lead there he, he knows that the seven car is has been falling off on these runs so he knew that if he could get in front of Cole Custer here uh, the lead could be his while these two are fighting for second they're catching the seven of Allgaier now Cole Custer. Be safe with everything you guys are running hard. Don't burn your stuff up and don't get into any trouble with Cole here. Right in the track, the tire track. So that seven. Just FYI, either got a tire coming apart or a wheel loose. Oh, oh, that no. was Justin wow. Allgaier's radio last lap to Jim Pullman. So he thinks he either has a loose wheel or a tire coming apart. Steve, as a crew chief, what do you do? You're almost helpless. Well, all you can do now is support your driver. You need to say, listen, I'm not in it. Only you know what you have. We are ready. If you think we need to pit, that's fine. The other bit of information, though, 92 to go. I would say we are 30 out of our fuel window. I'm not saying you can or can't, but DJ, let you know if you can somehow manage 30 laps. I'll pitch you early. As soon as I can make enough fuel, I'll bring you to pit road. Confident and everything. 
So are you confident? They're going to look at the helmet cameras of the tire changers. What they'll do is draw a pink line on the socket. And when you spin at full trigger, it just looks like the socket's pink. But as the lug nuts tighten, you start to see the line. Naked eye, maybe not. But on the camera slow down, if you can see the socket stop four, at least four times, you feel pretty good about it. The other thing is you look at the air pressure deviation. These are nitrogen tanks that run the guns, and you measure the pressure. And every time the lug nut tightens, you see a spike in the air pressure. So you can actually look at it like data and count how many tighten lug nuts. Now, all of that has lied to me over the course of my career, so you are still kind of taking an educated guess. That's what the seven is doing right now. Marty. And Jim Pullman came down, looked at all of his tire changers, and said, are you sure? But what you're looking at here, bottom left of the screen, is an iPad seat that has a little SD card, and they're putting every tire changer's SD card in there so they can watch that video on the iPad so they can all visually confirm, yes, we got them tight. And now the issue is, say it isn't a loose wheel. Say it isn't a tire coming apart. Maybe it's just a vibration. So that's best case scenario, but it's still going to hurt the seven. The double zero has gotten by, and this vibration. Yeah, you're confident, correct? Yes, yeah. sir, I am. There you go. Are you confident? Yes, I am. But even if it isn't a loose Fully wheel. Loaded mid -corner. It's going to still affect the handling of this car, not allow this team to make good adjustments on the green flag pit stops. Yeah, I can just tell you, it's really hard to make that decision when you're leading the race. Much harder than if you're running 10th, 11th, something like that. You say, okay, you know, there's no reason to fight this at this point. But to give up the lead with that, it's just so hard. No way can I run the fence with this. There you go. No way can I run the fence. I will say this. The other Hail Mary they could do is math says. Protect mode. Protect. You can pit twice in the stage. You yeah. can break it up into thirds. And you guys, you don't need to win or lead. And pit twice. And what that will allow you to do is, math-wise, it's way faster, but any caution completely disrupts that strategy. So the other plan is, uh, you got 11 laps on the triers, try to get 20-ish more laps, and just pin them early then. Jim Pullman's going to be looking at every option he has to try to bail his driver out of this situation. Running, set, running in the third position right now is that seven team of Justin Allgaier. What he doesn't need is to have an issue and wreck that car and not be able to finish this race. Currently, as the run, he's 16 points above the cut line. So, Rick, I'm curious from Steve, how much coaching do you if you're, uh, do if you're Jim Pullman at this point? Allgaier just said, you heard the radio, go into protect mode. Allgaier came back and said, it's hard for me to protect when there's two guys in front of me. That, but Pullman on the box has to go into coaching mode right now, which he's doing at this moment with Justin Allgaier. Well, what you're going to, this is where relationships, it all comes down to a relationship. You have to manage it, but you have to believe what your driver's telling you. And he has to hear not just what you're saying, but how you're saying it. And at this point, I can't worry about the double zero and the one. Let's worry about the seven. You're worried about new winners. I'm worried about trying to get 35 or 40 points out of this race. Let's not wreck. Let's not, if it shakes too bad, don't talk yourself into it that you think it's going to make it if you can. You just have to be honest with your situation. Sometimes, Dale, you just said it, very hard to pit. I'm going to let you know that I'm going to be okay if you pit and we don't find anything. I'm not going to be mad. I'm confident you're not making up this vibration. No, no, you're, you're not going to affect the double zero or the one with what you have to work with right there. I like your plan, of, and I think the sooner the better you just go ahead and take that risk if indeed uh, this is something that Justin feels like is going to happen and it's only going to get worse. That one of Sam Mayer continuing to hang it out as he got a little bit loose there. On the bottom of the screen, you see the 88. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has broken into the top 10. He's currently running in the ninth spot. So the two cars that he owns are on the top of the box with Sam Mayer and Allgaier running in the second and third position right now. And then Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying that low line as he tries to clear Parker Kligerman here. Dave, how about Dell Jr.? It's a simple thing, Rick. He just asked for a little bit of an adjustment before that last pit stop. Car was still a little bit too tight, and now a little bit freer is better for him to drive as here comes Parker to give him a little shove right there. He had the opposite problem early. Remember, the car was too loose, so they went too far, and now he has a, a better car that he can race with. Trying to take Sammy Smith now. Ran a little bit lower there through three and four. So they went too far, and now he has a, a better car that he can race with. Trying to take Sammy Smith now. 
Ran a little bit lower there through three and four. It's going to be something they're going to deal with through the end of this race. So Dale Jr. is going to fight for the seventh spot now with Sammy Smith. It's Cole Custer and Sam Mayer still out front fighting for the win. You don't have to be in the race to be in the race. Here comes the 94. Introducing the NASCAR Powerball Playoff. Four finalists will win a trip for two to the NASCAR Cup Series Championship race at the Phoenix Raceway, with the grand prize winner taking home $1 million. Here they are, the eight semifinalists for the million-dollar prize. Powerball, the official lottery game of NASCAR, and home to the NASCAR Powerball Playoff. Nice footwork. Man, you're lucky. Watching live sports never used to be this easy. Now you can stream all your games like it's nothing. Yes! That's what I'm talking about! Oh, here he comes! Go! Yeah! 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 Running up and down that field looks tough. It's a pitch. Get way more into what you're into when you stream on the Xfinity 10G network. You know what's crazy? That you can get a buffet to go? That Tony is getting a salad. And Lou should not do stand-up. But that's like a third roll. I'm on a roll. That you can start with dessert. Or how about soup? Wait and pay, baby. Experience the joy of home sweet hosting with help from Ashley. Pay 0% interest for five years on guest approved essentials starting at just $17 per month. Plus save on accessories store wide to finish every look. Shop and save today only at Ashley. It's orientation day. Welcome to the team. race. I like this team. Be part of something greater. Toyota, let's go places. In the beginning was Daytona. Here we go. The birthplace of speed. The launch pad of legends. The great American race. Oh, it's always been and will always be the proving ground for greatness. Every driver looking to be remembered Every fan looking for something they'll never forget. Secure your seats now at Daytona500.com. Back in Miami, 78 laps to go here. And for the NASCAR Xfinity Series, you saw it all in nonstop. Justin Allgaier eventually did have to come to pit road. And there was the culprit. The left rear tire was indeed loose, Steve. That's your clear indicator right there. So what's the path forward now for the 17? Justin Allgaier and his crew chief, Jim Pullman. Well, the good news is currently uh, he's in the free pass or just unlapping himself. I'm trying to lock, find him exactly on the racetrack. I think he's going to be in the free pass position. He's going so fast. Yeah, he's the first car one lap down. He's passing cars inside the top 10. With fresh tires, he should unlap himself in about six or seven laps. So my plan now is I have to decide, am I trying to stop the bleeding or am I trying to win the race? Because if you stop the bleeding, what you do is you just run until you're about out of gas and hit at that point and hope you get a yellow. There's now, if you're in Vegas and you're going to push all your chips on the table, I wouldn't wait till the next caution. The other option is you get about 35 or 40 to go, and I put my last set of tires on and lean back and say, you know what, I'm going to break this up in thirds, and that math says I should win this race. But there's a lot of chances Jim Pullman knows this as well as anyone on pit road. He knows that a yellow would end his day. I like the idea of running to the next yellow. He doesn't need a win. He came in above the cut line. He's only eight below even in this awful position. So I think this is the time where maybe a little discretion is... It was never my strong suit as I say that, but a little <laughs> discretion would be the way to go for the seven. This is a team mistake, and you want to limit the amount of problems that come from this mistake. So don't compound them. Just they have fixed the issue. Now don't make it worse. Is that well, what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But the other issue is he asked four or five times, and they were sure they were tight. So I'm not saying they're lying. I'm confident they thought they were tight. So whatever they're looking at for video or looking at for data is not giving them a clear view because the wheel was clearly loose. That can't be solved here today. 
but with what's on the line the next two weeks, that's a conversation, DJ, we're going to have to have this week. Yeah. You know, hey, I believe you, but why, why possibly did we have a loose wheel and not know it? Yeah, and the problem that only biggest problem I see now, I'm with you with the two stops, I think go after the win, but here's the problem. At least three-quarter of this field, probably 80% of the field now, is up against the wall. We're seeing more cars have contact, and eventually that's going to create a caution flag here. It really is. So now what's the 7 doing? He's passing the 98, who's the third-place car. Sam Mayer, a couple seconds ahead, about five seconds up, all the way to Cole Custer, who's leading the race. So all the 7 can do now is go as hard as he can go. But once you get in front of the double zero, I might almost back you down a little bit and say, okay, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. You've done what we needed to do. Now I want you to run hard enough to keep that guy behind you. Yeah. That's all I need you to do. And he's a second faster right now than what Cole Custer, the leader of the race, is running. So it's not going to take him long to get there. While all this was happening, the 48 of Parker Kligerman also got into the wall. He had to come to pit road. You see the damage on the right side of the 48 here. He was getting a run of the top behind Dale Jr. Gets a little loose. Oh. Yeah, it just got into the wall a little bit. It looks like the right rear's down. I'm not yeah. sure if he got into the wall or just had a flat. Ryan Sieg in the 39. Another one who wall got him here. Yeah, well, he is a flat tire already. Coming out, yeah. yeah, he is a flat tire already. So you can only get into the wall so much and finally you wear through everything that's holding the tires off the wall. Hey, Steve, to that point, the 48 of Parker Kligerman, the run before had a right rear that showed damage, but no loss of air. This run, damage and loss of air. So like you said, you can only hit it so many times, you just have to take care of not only the body, but the right rear of that car. Remember, he said he didn't know quite how to race these cars versus a truck or a cup car. I think he's learned some lessons today. Absolutely, Dave, and it's exactly what you're talking about, Dale, right? Every car here has a right side with 100 and 29 laps worth of use, which, yeah. you know, they've kind of used some mulligans up. On board with Junior, he's really settled in here. He is rolling. This is exactly playing out kind of how we talk. Now, I realize some people have had problems in front of, but we talked about before this race started, you get him with more comfortable into this third stage, you have some long green flag runs, he can make a difference in this race. And looking out the right side window, if it looks two-tone, that's not your TV at home, it is two-tone. That is some tint you're allowed to run on the top here because as you roll down in, right here he's in three and four, sun's not really an issue. As he comes down the front stretch, you know, if the sun gets low enough, it can kind of glare in that right side. And when you're only, I'll be nice to say one foot, I think it's probably in the inches, yeah. off that wall right there, you see that kind of that glare. If you lose that tint, it really shines into the race car. He's got the dark shield on, you see on the bottom right. Now this is when the sun's gonna be at its worst for them as they go from turn four to turn one. Again, Dale Jr. fighting his way up. He's gonna be trying to get into that top five. And there is out of turn four looking forward. A little bit of glare on the windshield there for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah, and right there as you enter turn one, that's where it really jumps up at you. Fortunately, they put some grandstands and suites down there, and the sun does get down behind there, so it doesn't last as long as what it used to. Marty, uh, is the seven going to try a little new strategy now that they had to go to uh, those different tires? doing all he can do right now. But Steve, he just came on the radio to Jim Pullman a moment ago, and he said, I think I killed the threads on the left rear wheel. We ran it too long with a loose wheel, and Pullman said, I was afraid of that. So what does all that mean, Steve? Well, what happens is you showed the damage to the wheel. Well, what's doing that damage is the wheel stud, and that's where the threads are. Remember, these lug nuts are tapered. Unlike a regular nut that would tighten up against the bolt like a nut you would have at home, it would be kind of flush. But the taper means that the tip of that lug nut goes where that wheel is, kind of into that insert. So where that wheel was banging on those wheel studs has mushroomed those threads over. So now you tighten the lug nut all you want, but it actually just tightens against the messed up threads. It doesn't clamp the wheel tight enough. That was my concern when you ride that long on a loose wheel. We'll have to just wait and see as he looks like he's about ready to unlap himself on the double zero right here. But Marty, that's really going to be the issue, right? Damage on those wheel studs. If they can get them tight, that's great, but it's going to take longer pit stops. And Steve, he came on the radio just a moment ago while you were doing that report and said, honestly, it's no better than it was before. So, DJ, what's that like behind the wheel? 
Well, you know, once you have that problem, you know what the end result is going to eventually be. So uh, it's very uncomfortable as a driver. Uh, but, you know, you've got what you've got right now. So all you can do is just drive it and hope somehow it all stays together. He felt the loose wheel. They came to pit road. It was definitely a loose wheel. Now he's riding with it. He just unlapped himself. The Sonic 2 for 7 deal lets you choose from the Sonic cheeseburger, chicken sandwich, or foot-long chili cheese coney. Any two for seven bucks. Because that friend that says they only want one bite never just wants one bite. Sonic 2 for 7 deal. Ma, are you sure you don't want to go bowling with us tonight? Yeah, no. There's my little marzipan. <laughs> oh, my daughter gives the best hugs. <laughs> We're just passing through on our way to the Jazz Jamboree. <laughs> and we wanted to thank America's number one motorcycle insurer for saving us money. <laughs> Mara, your parents are exactly like me. I know, right? <laughs> well, cherish your friends and loved ones. <laughs> Let's roll, daddy-o. Let's boogie woogie. With nearly 6,000 stores and over 17,000 auto care centers across the country, Napa has America's largest network of parts and care. Here to be the fuel that keeps you firing on all cylinders. Right now at Napa, get a five-quart jug of Napa full synthetic motor oil for only $19.99. Or claim a $25 Visa card when you purchase a Napa Legend, Napa Legend Premium AGM, or AAA battery. You don't have to be in the race to be in the race. Here comes the 94. Introducing the NASCAR Powerball Playoff. Four finalists will win a trip for two to the NASCAR Cup Series Championship race at the Phoenix Raceway, with the grand prize winner taking home $1 million. Here they are, the eight semifinalists for the million-dollar prize. Powerball, the official lottery game of NASCAR and home to the NASCAR Powerball Playoff. You know what's crazy? Is that you can get a buffet to go? That Tony is getting a salad. And Lou should not do stand-up. But that's like a third roll. I'm on a roll. They can start with dessert. Or how about soup? Wait and pay, baby. In the NASCAR Xfinity Series Playoffs, Green flag is in the air. names are made here. And here. At the line. And definitely here. But with the championship on the line, your name can only take you so far. A will to win, a hunger for speed, and a whole lot of attitude. That's how to see your name in bright lights. The NASCAR Xfinity Series Playoffs. at Miami Speedway where we have stops under green flag condition. Sheldon Creed, top of your board, said no rear lateral or lateral grip. Need an adjustment on that. Four fresh Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel as well as that adjustment, Dave. Kim for Austin Hill. His team is done with the service. He's prescribed his car mainly tight on throttle. Don't want to be any tighter entry or to the middle. He's off pit road. All right, Steve, how quickly will we see other green flag pit stops as the race off of pit road between those RCR cars? Kim. And the 98 of Riley Herps making his stop. You saw that adjustment. He said he just needed more front turn on that machine. What a great run after a win last week for Riley Herps, Dave. 20 of John Hunter Nemechek. He needs lateral grip, rear drive. They'll make a four. Goodyear tire change for him. And adjustments there. Dale Earnhardt Jr. on the left. He's on pit road. He said no grip. I don't know what to do there. They'll make some changes. See if it works, Marty. Dave, we have talked about the patience Cole Custer has shown today. He has led 108 laps. This could be his race to advance to the championship. Championship four, a car having a problem on the racetrack. One car blowing up. I believe that's Chandler Smith coming to pit road now. But for Cole Custer, he said once he got to the wall and was willing to run it, he said he just needs a little bit more turn. They've been the dominant car, and the pit crew's been terrific. Can they deliver on what should be the last stop, Dave? So far for Sammy Smith today, it's been tough. As he leaves pit road now, they made changes to the 18. Oh, no, he's coming in right now. So the four Goodyear tires he will get will hopefully change that car. This rookie has not had a good day in terms of stage point. He has not earned any. Remember, he came in at a deficit. He's making Martinsville look like a must win next week. Hard left-hand turn for the 16 of Chandler Smith. He's behind the wall now, so out of this race, it looks like, for the 16 as Ellis and Sammy Smith get on the access road as they exit pit road. 
and back up to speed down the back stretch. The nine. Brandon Jones, Parker Retzloff also on pit road now. So green flag pit stops taking place now. As two and 21 again those fresh tires. Those two fighting for spots on the track. Derek Krause back out front again as the green flag pit stops continue to cycle through. A little earlier than I anticipated you know the dry, the leaders only had about 40 laps in their tires they were pitting with 60 to go and I know that's been the signature as we see now Kaz Grahl on the 26 with some heavy smoke out of the left front. Maybe tire smoke Don't best I could here. tell I see Don't some pretty heavy pay. damage on the left front might have just been rubbing that fender but you know they're going to ask this last set of tires to go a, quite a way. Let's see what happened to the 26 here. Pulls out. Oh boy. Oh, he hit the wall. It, it's oh, his own tire. tire. It's his own tire that came off and might be a it was going to be a, probably a penalty anyway. Knocked his tire out into pit lane. So now you have Kraus, who remember he used that extra set of tires. He's leading the race. Josh Berry. Uh, just out running longer, which I don't hate this call for Josh Baird looking for a caution because then he could come and put his last set on and be fresher. Allgaier, who had that vibration running third, Custer on brand new tires fourth, Mayor Hill, Creed, and Nemechek the top eight. So, what I was saying, DJ, is you know, 60 laps on a set of tires here, they are not going to be fun the last 20 laps or so. No, they're not. Uh, but, you know, in a perfect world for Justin Allgaier right now, a caution, I mean, the other guys would have to come get their final set of tires too, wouldn't they? If they don't, then Allgaier's just going to drive gonna right go, to the yeah. front. So, Eight's on pit road, Marty. Yeah, Josh Berry coming down pit road. So, Steve, I'm curious, how long was this run for Josh Berry? Because they wanted to leave him out a few more laps, and he literally told Taylor Moyer, I can go no further. I have to come in right now. It feels like there is zero rubber left on the right front of this tire. So that run for Josh Berry might have been the limit. So to the point of asking all these laps for these last set of tires, Josh Berry may have just pushed that to the end. Well, 43 green is the answer. They ran over 50 total, but some of those were under yellow. So... 43 green flag laps and he said he had to have tires what that tells me is maybe the plan for the leaders like Custer is with 25 to go they'll just pit again under green I mean they can make it on fuel uh, but it'll be interesting it takes about 32 seconds to pit plus a pit stop so if you put about 12 seconds on pit road call it 13 uh, you're looking at 45 seconds man you'd have to I mean I know two tires new tires are worth a couple three seconds a lap but man, you would have to have a really impressive run to run those guys back oh, down. Now you would feel like <laughs> Superman out there on new tires. Yeah, we've seen that out of the fresher tires. We saw it out of Derek Kraus uh, winning stage two as they're three wide here. Sheldon Creed on the outside as we see John Hunter Nemechek uh, go by. Yeah, Creed had just passed him. I don't know if John Hunter had a problem. I just saw the pass being made. Now John Hunter, they were three wide there with Riley Herbst on the bottom. So Kraus on the top left has just set of tires down. Custer is the correct leader, real leader, pit cycle leader. Third, Sam Mayer at 4.7 seconds back is really the next car that's equal up on tires. Marty, what are you hearing on pit road? Steve, did you say 44 laps for Josh Berry? This is the right front tire, and he wasn't kidding. There's almost no rubber left on that right front tire, so dissect what happened there on the right front of the eight, Steve. So what happens if we stay here for just a second? What happens is it wears through kind of over here, and then what happens is um, the, the belts are kind of wrapped around the tire just like a ball of yarn and as soon as it wears through the rubber it catches one of those belts that's the unwinding you see across is it's literally tearing the string out from underneath the rubber that's what gives it those horizontal lines around the race or around the tire so I can tell you the problem you know what's on the other side of all of that is air yeah yeah so you, you don't want to let the air out so now after green flag pit stops have cycled through it's Cole Custer and Sam Mayer running one and two. The two of them are separated by three and a half seconds. A slow stop for Dale Earnhardt Jr. He was running up close to the fifth position. Now he's back in 10th. 
That still has Kraus out in front of him, who we know that Derek Kraus will have to come to pit road here shortly. Cole Custer increasing his lead. 4.7 seconds now over Sam Mayer. All Geyer, and with that strategy, he's currently running in the top five. He's fourth. Yeah, he just needs that caution right now, really. He doesn't want to go in hardly any further because that would drag everybody to pit road, and he's sitting here in fourth. And moments ago, the seven up into the wall. Again, he thinks he has an issue uh, as far as those lug nuts, Steve, not tightening enough to give him a comfortable feeling with that wheel. Yeah, I mean, basically they rode so long on the loose left rear that now there's damage that doesn't allow it to really be tightened up. Let's listen in to Allgaier. Protect your right side, middle of the seam. Middle of the seam, I'm six inches off the wall, bro. Cole Custer has a problem. Yeah, he's, he's slow on the racetrack as he goes across the finish right, line. Right front. Right, right front tire right. flat, Rick. That's what he just said. So right front tire flat for the dominant car today. Had led 114 laps for Cole Custer. And the problem is it happened coming off turn four. He's got to lip all the way around the racetrack. And the problem is I can't tell you if he got into the wall or didn't get into the wall. They've hit the wall so many times. I know he has at some point. I'm not sure if that's what caused this. Let's take a look. He goes in. It looks like it's up. It looks like it's at speed like normal I mean I don't know what happened first we definitely saw some wall contact so we'll have to just hear what the double zero has to say but now to Marty's point as he goes around at this speed all the sparks everything you see I know there's an inner liner he's dragging the sway bar arm off the right front splinter off this double zero is going to be a world of trouble even if he does get back to pit road he's on pit road and watch the points go away from Cole Custer as they run, now he's only one point above the cut line and now below the cut line. Those 18 points that he was able to gain in the first two stages, huge right now, Marty. Oh, my goodness, Rick. The win was so close for the double zero team. They looked like they would lock into the championship four, but you got to run all 200 laps. That right front gone for Cole Custer. And now they'll go into Martinsville, likely in a must-win scenario. Check that right front coming off the double zero car here. So these new tires will help, Steve. But, man, those points slipping away every moment here for the double zero. Now it really just depends on what everyone else does in the race. Remember, he was one of the drivers coming in. That was just barely above the cut line. 15 points, I yeah. guess, depends on which side you're on, if it's barely or a good area. We'll see he's going to lose points here. But now, who wins the race? Do we see a new winner? Minus seven right now, which is good news for Custer because he's about 20th on the racetrack. But how do these leaders, Sam Mayer, how do he and his team, Austin Hill is right there, Nemechek, uh, Sheldon Creek, how do they go about this um, and get trying to get that many laps out of their tires? I don't, I don't see it happen. No, I don't either. I think you're going to have to pit with 15 or 20 laps to go, or you might be the caution. The seven has finally said he had to come in, whether it's worn out tires or a vibration on the left rear. We'll have to get an update. Now the double zero also has a penalty for too many men over the wall. Marty. Yeah, the insult to injury for Cole Custer. They'll have to serve that penalty. Jim Pullman did not want to make this move to pit for Justin Allgaier because he wanted a set of tires later in the race. Allgaier said, I simply cannot go any longer. So Allgaier pitting from the top five after having maybe his best ever Miami race. And there's Cole Custer, the dominant car, serving his penalty. What a swing of events here in stage three, Rick. Yeah, race leader Cole Custer, right front goes down. They come to pit road. Too many men over the wall. And so now Cole Custer serving the penalty. Allgaier has come back to pit road. They've got an issue with the wheel, uh, not feeling like it is completely secure. So that puts Sam Mayer out in front. And the other playoff driver who's currently out of this race is Chandler Smith. Rick, he had a banged up race car with the front end that didn't look right. Did you eventually just overheat that motor? Uh, I just noticed I started smelling some oil. Um, and looked at my oil pressure gauge and was losing a little bit of oil. And it kind of plateaued a little bit there. I was thinking it was going to be okay. Uh, and then out of nowhere, it just started blowing up. So sucks. I hate it for my guys. I hate uh, I hate what got us there partially. It's my fault for not doing a good job in qualifying and qualifying as far back as we did. Kind of stayed there. Uh, I'm definitely pretty pissed off between the 11 and 9. I don't know if it was a race to deal. Looking at, looking at the replays, it looks like they both kind of screwed up and I was the collateral damage of it both, so 
Uh, sucks, to say the least, but uh, I'm going to watch this as a race fan for the rest of the race, and I hope Junebug goes and wins this thing, to be honest with you. There's one for Junior. There's the wreck again that started the day for Chandler Smith going bad. And as he said at the end, the motor just gave way. A lot of people, Rick, saying next week, I got to win at Martinsville to advance. One of them, Chandler Smith. Yeah, and the reason he wants Junior to win is because he wouldn't lock up one of those championship <laughs> four spots that he wants to be a part of. Sam Mayer is out front right now at Homestead Miami Speedway. Nice footwork. Man, you're lucky. Watching live sports never used to be this easy. Now you can stream all your games like it's nothing. Yes! That's what I'm talking about! Oh, here he comes! Go! Yeah! 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 Running up and down that field looks tough. It's a pitch. Get way more into what you're into when you stream on the Xfinity 10G network. <laughs> a first child can be stressful. So to make things a little less overwhelming, Progressive is offering special rewards for new parents. But we're not stopping there. We think even cat ladies deserve rewards. Left-handed people. People with birthdays. Recent grads who can't move on with their lives. All of them. And these people we found on the internet can be automatically enrolled in the Progressive Loyalty Program and get special rewards. Even people who just got back from Europe. It's actually pronounced croissant. I was just in Europe. Right now, Sonic's small hand mix shakes are $1.99 all day. It sells itself, so I'll just list flavors in my sexy voice. Chocolate, strawberry, peanut butter. $1.99 small classic shakes all day at Sonic. the wrong mattress you snooze you lose at ashley we've got you covered with top mattress brands at winning prices and you can snooze now and pay later with zero percent interest for 60 months make every snooze count shop in store or online today trick or treat have you seen something in this house there's a killer stalking the White House, and you're insisting on throwing a party. They're coming for me, and I'm gonna be ready for them. This is gonna be your final home before you're put to death by lethal injection. We'll see. <laughs> Devin! Chuggy, Wednesday at 9. Only 38 laps to go here at Homestead Miami Speedway as we take a look at the Toyota Driver update. John Hunter in fourth, Sammy seventh, Joe 12th, Connor 29th, and Kaz 32nd right now as they run on the track. Sam Mayer still up front by 3.2 seconds over Austin Hill. Sam Mayer still running uh, one of the top five fastest laps out front. Let's go through the field for the playoff drivers as, wait a minute, the caution has now come out, and it might be for that wheel or tire that we saw on pit road. Yes, sir, enough. There's a tire laying up against the outside wall of pit road, and so the caution has come out. Steve, everybody on pit road? If you have tires left, I think now is when you have to put them on. 37 laps to go, and that kind of took some of the the llama away from the tire from the teams that pitted so early. I think everybody has to come now. Unfortunately for Allgaier, who I think put his last set of tires on. Now the good news is he'll be able to stay out and take the wave around. Uh, but now he's in a kind of a world of hurt. He really needs this to run through for a cycle. Cole Custer also uh, was trapped a lap down. There were only 13 cars on the lead lap when this caution came out. And you remember what happened, what really makes it worse for Custer is he put on a set of tires and then had a flat. So he's out of tires. He's going to have to take the wave around. <laughs> Crowd having fun here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Again, there'll be two races remaining for the Xfinity Series at the checkered flag today. Sam Mayer's out front trying to 
lock up a spot in the championship four. A win automatically gets you into that championship four. We talk a lot about saving tires. So, you know, you want to, you really want to hear a Hail Mary. A Hail Mary for someone like Brandon Jones, who's running ninth, is to not pit here. Uh, 36 laps to go. You're absolutely going to be the last car in the lead lap, probably laps down if you don't get another yellow. But if you run 15 laps and get a yellow, you're the only car in Homestead, Miami with a set of tires. You'll win the race. I mean, you you literally will. It'll be just like Darren Krause did that stage. You'll drive by, by everybody like you're the fastest thing here. So you look at non-playoff cars is what I mean. So you look at Jones or Brary, Joe Graff Jr. Maybe Jeff Burton tries to steal a win. Now, look, the risk is real. This is an all or nothing move. If you don't pit, you're going to look silly because you're going to be in big trouble if you don't get a yellow. But if you get a yellow, pay dirt. Why wouldn't Sammy Smith try that? He's not in contention. He's so many points behind. Why would they not uh, try that strategy? I don't hate that because at 43 points behind, there's only so many more he can currently make up. And staying on the racetrack would put maybe Custer and Allgaier with the chance to recover as much. So that could also I'll trap a guy playing a little offense while you're playing defense. Marty. Justin Allgaier and Cole Custer will both take the wave around here. Steve, just, or uh, Cole Custer, really still upset with him about what happened. Listen to the radio. And four, I missed the first time I hit the freaking wall all day. Sorry, guys. Hey, dude, this is a team. We love you. Still love you. So uh, we're going to fight to the end here. We're going to be okay. And then, Steve, to make it even worse, Jonathan Tony on your screen right now, that was him with too many men over the wall. He went to catch that flat tire, that right front that went flat. He went over the wall accidentally, and that's why they got that penalty after hitting the wall. Man, that is just too bad. The extra penalty really put him behind. Now we see the leaders come in. There you go. Sheldon Creed turns right, stays on the racetrack. A big gamble by the two car. I don't hate it. Kim. Yeah, and there was a great debate between he and crew chief Jeff Stankiewicz. They are banking on a late caution. Let's follow the stop, though, of Sam Mayer. Sam said he just got a tick free during that run. About a 2 out of 10 free for fresh Goodyear tires. So no go fuel, Dave. Austin Hill stated the obvious best it's been all day long. He said it could be a little bit tighter on throttle, so I could squeeze it at the three-quarter mark. John Hunter Nemechek said, I was having to turn right on exit of corner. That right rear is not in the track as they'll do the race off pit road here. And so they race off of pit road those that came how about the two of Sheldon Creed let's listen into his radio everybody we're gonna take a big gamble here could not work out at all we could go a lot down but I think it's our only chance to win okay Four. I love it let's go to Vegas push them all on the table <laughs> but what this also does is I love the theory they're currently well below the cut line they were 40 points below now they're going to be shown as the leader but they were well below. They were closing in on a must win. They really didn't have speed to go outrun the one. But what this also does is staying on the racetrack is if we let this field go by behind them on the racetrack, the seven of Allgaier, the double zero. They can't take the wave around now because a lead lap car stayed out in front of them. So good move for the two. Also playing a little defense on your other playoff competitors. Only 14 on the lead lap. Sheldon Creed stays out, and now with under 33 laps to go, Sheldon Creed with a pitch strategy call trying to win his first race in the Xfinity Series. How did we get to this point? Well, let's go to the Peacock Pit Box with Jeff and KP and explain to you how we got to this point in the race. <laughs> well, the action started early. We've seen a lot of cars in the wall. As soon as they dropped the green flag, a lot of racing, KP. Yeah, tons of racing. Listen, this thing started out, and we saw the double zero of Cole Custer take control of this race. But we saw early on some of the contenders begin to have trouble. There's fluid coming out of Austin, uh, uh, Sheldon Creed's car onto the windshield of Dale Jr. Yeah, he, there, there you see a two car sideways eating that right rear tire up. He has really good long run speed. Cole Custer wins stage one. Not unexpected. Uh, and we see the 16 here. We see uh, Smith here, he gets to the inside, he just gets taken out. Not his fault. Not his, he was in position, two cars on the outside, uh, Brandon Jones, and, and got together with another car. Here, it takes him out. Eventually, he blows an engine. And Sheldon Creed, we talked a lot about Sheldon Creed today. He's been in the wall again. <laughs> See right here, the 16 car, he had that damage. He had to come in, car ended up overheating, blowing the engine up. His day is done. 
And the double zero, here's, we, we thought that maybe the tire went down, but we heard him say later, first time all day long, I've gotten the wall. To add insult to injury, as he limps around and comes down pit road, he has an extra man over, over the wall. That's unacceptable. When you're in that situation and you know you've already dug a hole, you can't make the hole deeper. Yeah, so now the, the plot thickens because yes. Sheldon Creed and his team they are in a must-win situation. I personally, I looked at you uh, about five laps yes, when that caution yes, came did. out. I said two car wins yes. because he's so fast on a long run. I don't think he wanted that caution. The caution came, yep. and when it did, they said, hey, well, you know what? We got to win. We're going to stay out. Look, if this thing goes green, they're going to have a horrible finish. Yep. But if it doesn't and they get a late race caution, they come in, put on, put on four tires, Sheldon Creed flying over to the field, he'd have a great shot to win. A great shot to win. He's 41, minus 41 going into this thing. This is not a gamble. This is something, as far as I'm concerned, this is something they have to do. They were put in this position. What I also like about it, it takes Al Geyer and Custer and throws another shovel of dirt on them because they didn't get the wave around like we've heard a number of times here. Well, Rick, it's a lot of fun down here. I know you guys are having fun. <laughs> and it's just gonna it's just beginning. Remember a lot of late race restarts. This could not be the last one. <laughs> so Burton's calling it already that we're going to see another caution that will bring another restart into this. Steve, do they still have that set of tires from qualifying yesterday? Is that is a scuff set of tires? Could it be another option for them? Well, these guys normally start on their scuffs, so they probably have all stickers in the pits. Okay. They usually don't have to roll their scuffs forward. Uh, so they have a brand new set of tires in the pits. Everyone else has nothing. Um, it's, it's become really interesting, right? Because the two right here is going to just try to not lose as much time as possible, not get wrecked on old tires, which That's is a right. big concern. Yep. Uh, but now, if you go all no, the way back... Just not hit me too early. Yeah, don't hit me too early, because, man, I'm out here on old tires. You're going to want to accelerate. But now the seven and the double zero, who couldn't take the wave around, to quote our friend Kyle Petty with the one more shovel full of dirt, here's the other issue, is the other cars, Ryan Sieg, Josh Williams, Jeffrey Earnhardt, Jeremy Clements, in the Kyle Petty throwback, they all are a lap down, but they just put on brand-new tires. So I know that, you know, the 7 and the double zero have pretty good s speed, but they have, you know, older tires on their car, so it's going to be next to impossible for them to even race for the, three, for the free pass. So Sheldon Creed, these are the laps that he has led, 340 and counting, without a win. You see only three names above him, Brian Scott, Davey Allison, Shane Beal, as far as not getting or leading more laps and not getting that first win. All right, so DJ, what's the two do to not get run over? He knows he's down on tire. Yeah, it's just really hard. I think you just move up, and Riley Hurst can't lay back too much. We saw a couple of penalties in the cup race, and he didn't do that. So he did a good job right there. Spinning but you just got to get out of the way. Outside, outside, middle. Yeah, they are flying by him. So Sheldon Creed's going to try to limit the amount of damage here. He falls all the way back, even through turns one and two, as we saw a car got into the wall there. I don't know if it was the eight or the 88. Both looked like they were close to the wall when we saw the smoke. Oh, the eight's into the wall now. And he has a problem. This could bring the caution out, probably will bring the caution out, if he and can't get, get hard to the left. Wait, caution wait, wait, is wait, out. Wait, wait, two more cars, three, two, one. Come on to the bottom, you're good. That's a little earlier than Sheldon Creed needed. Yeah. yeah, he did. He did. Well, let's see who NASCAR says is the free pass. On our scoring monitor, we have Parker Kligerman, the highest scored car a lap down. We'll see if that's what it was. And sure enough, Parker Kligerman will get the free pass. Yeah, so that's just one more swing and a miss for all Geyer and Custer. And listen, Sheldon, that's kind of what I was ex expecting. Um, you would just pull over and start at the back, but you don't want to give up the extra second or two because you're going to probably go a lap down. And to your point, DJ, they wanted a yellow, but they didn't want it that soon. Let's see what happened to the eight. No, he just got a little bit high into the wall, best I could tell. Oh, did Junior put him into the wall? It looked like Junior got loose and... Took the car he owns up the racetrack with him. Oh, yeah, sure big enough. slide and yep. cannonballed up into Josh Berry. So the 88, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, was running beside that eight of Josh Jones, or excuse me, of Josh Berry, and got into him. They went into the wall, and then we see the result for Josh Berry. 
Riding along with Junior, watching it. Yeah, the eight just gets to the outside. We didn't see the eight in front of him, right? So the eight gets to the outside of the 88, and then Dale gets loose, comes up, takes the eight up into the wall. Pretty heavy damage on the right side of the 88. We're going to have to see if he has air in his tires. Well, let's listen into what Junior had to say. Yeah, I heard it eight through the middle or something. I don't know. I just got, I just confused on what you're telling me. We got a flat tire. All right, we're to us. So we'll go back and worry about it later, but. So, sounds like maybe a little confusion with the spotter or radio communication. Thinks he has a flat, so we'll just have to see if he has to pit. Asking for Jeb to come look at it. Now, no, no, the rear. I want you to look at the right rear, he says. Oh, man, that sucks. Well, right here, when I felt like I was here, the eight was in the middle. I didn't know anybody was to the outside. We're going to be able to hear this story tomorrow. Well, so what he's saying is, is he heard eight middle, which it was really, it was eight outside your middle. So Dale Jr. was the middle. He didn't have someone to his left putting him top three wide. And this is just part of, you know, we talk a lot about driver, crew chief communication, driver spotter communication. I mean, there's a lot going on on this restarts. There's chaos everywhere. And, and only the second time he's been behind the wheel this year. So, yeah, there's not that continuity of, the communication that we always hear. All right, so here you go. You have the 88 in that orange car, right? So he is going to go three wide top around the two. And then right here, the eight gets to the outside of him, four wide there, now three wide. Now it's eight, three wide, your middle, your middle. He probably thinks eight is maybe to his left rear. Looked like he got loose, but yeah. maybe he was just moving up, thinking he had to leave the gate in the middle lane. But either way, contact with the eight, put Josh Berry in the wall the damage to the right side of the 88. Big donut there. I'm not going to talk to him on the radio, Rick. I'm going to let him go ahead. This would be a good time not to talk. Yeah, I'm going to let him finish this one out. We'll just talk to him tomorrow in person. But don't be looking over here at me like I I'm was going gonna, to. I didn't yeah, know if you I, were going to talk to him on the radio. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if anybody could get away with it. Yeah, you know, these restarts are just so hard anyway. And, and when you're not in the car all the time, getting that communication right. So let's go down to Kim and... The radio of the two, I'm sure, is very interesting after this caution. Oh, yeah, it's actually been kind of quiet. While they do have an extra set of tires and we're looking for a late race caution, this was not the late race caution they were looking for because it came a little bit too early. So they are going to stay out while pit road is open and hope for a second later caution to take that last set of fresh Goodyear tires. Right now, I know Sheldon is behind the eight ball with the old tires he has. So they've just told him, hold your line as best as you can. We know what you're working with out there. So, Kim, we're going to focus on the two of Sheldon Creed on this most recent restart. Again, he started up front because he didn't come to pit road. Everybody around him has fresh tires. Yeah, I mean, there's really nothing he could do. Just hold his line. He's in the middle. The 10 gets right to his bumper, and I don't know if he didn't know or just didn't think he'd get to the outside, but this could have been really bad for the two. Yeah, you need a caution. You just don't want to be it. Uh, but there's just nothing you can do. I mean, he did the right thing there. Uh, of getting right there and you know these other drivers should have been uh, notified of what was going on with that so that you know and, and again it's hard you've got cars going everywhere there but uh, you know he's just needing to ride is all that he was needing to do so now what does the two need 25 to go it's as he's losing laps it's making this Hail Mary a little bit harder um, but to be honest tires fall off so much I mean, a green-white checker, he could about still win the race. Like, if they run 20 hard laps on these tires and the caution comes out, there's only 14 cars in the lead lap, so he'll, he'll line up in the front seven rows with brand-new tires. Maybe not a green-white checker, but three or four laps is probably all he would need. Just remember, this car does not fire off good on new tires uh, against others with new tires. So, yeah. you know, he's got that, but he's still going to be way faster. Marty, what about Cole Custer? Yeah, sitting in 17th, still a lap down, and he wanted a points update from Jonathan Tony. Worst case scenario is one car wins. Where does that put us right now? Well, right now, the way it runs, no matter what happens, if one car wins, we're going to beat Fiat one point, one point out of the 
one point out of fourth. Because uh, right now, the way the point started, the uh, one car is third in point, and he's leading the race. So. So, Steve, look at the left-hand side of your screen going to the last race in the round of eight at Martinsville next weekend if it finishes like this. Boy, that would be a heck of a battle. You look, Austin Hill plus six, Allgaier, Cole Custer. They would be one point on the right side of the cut line and Custer one point on the wrong side of the cut line. And all three of these drivers a few weeks ago, everyone had them in their championship four. That would be a whale of a battle next week. Oh, it'd be a heavyweight battle, but I think we're going to get that for the last 25 laps of this <laughs> race because I'm not sure. Um, if the one is the guaranteed winner by any means, right? We have Hill and Nemechek behind him. We have Creed out there kind of working on a, a little bit of a hook and ladder. Look, he's still laddering the ball, waiting for the yellow to come out, trying to make a run at it. I don't hate the two's position. I know this is crazy, and it's going to take something. But look, I mean, the final green flag run at this racetrack was five laps or less in each of the last four races here. So this isn't a crazy idea to think that we could have a late yellow. The other thing we have to remember is every position on the track is a point. So even though Cole Custer, we show him as one point down below the cut line, he's running against a bunch of other cars that are a lap down. So he could gain potentially two spots, which would put him above that cut line he with could those also, positions gained. He could also lose 10 correct spots to all the guys as well, Rick. To your point, this could definitely move. Let's listen in to the 7 radio of Justin Algar. I'm just going to tell you, frustration level is pegged like 400 out of 10. I'm sorry. I don't mean anything that I'm saying to you. I got to figure out a way to outlet it because if I don't, I'm going to implode in here. So I'm just telling you right now. So we haven't played the seven radio uh, prior, but I'm guessing it's been pretty colorful uh, from Algar because he had the loose wheel. They've had an issue. He got trapped a lap down. He wasn't able to get the free pass. He's stuck now in the 15th position. He is the first car lap down if another caution does come out. It's a patient, a patience words out the window now. Patience out the window as we get ready for the restart. You ready, Rick? 23 laps remain here in Homestead, Miami. So look right there, Riley Hurst. Winner last week. He could do his teammate a huge favor here if he can figure out a way to go past Sam Mayer. His teammate, Cole Custer. And he's racing right now for that second spot. Four wide back here as Cole Custer made it four wide. Sam Mayer has had great success this season on road courses. Can he show the strength now on a mile and a half? Well, in the pre-race pre show, we had trending reports, and Sam Mayer was trending up because while he has three career wins, they've happened all in the last 11 races. So this is a driver that has matured. He's found a way to win. I know road courses have seemed to be his specialty, but he has had speed other places, and you wonder... If today is the day, right, could this be the big oval track win propelling him into the championship four and that sun continues to set going into one? Not only is it bright, but then you kind of drive into the darkness. It's got to take your eyes a little bit of time to kind of adapt. Acclimate to that differing uh, sunlight level. And John Hunter Nemechek now in the third position, chasing down the 21 of Austin Hill in front of him. Let's see what he does as they go into three. Yeah, John Hunter wants to be aggressive. He obviously would like to win because that does lock him in. But he's got such a huge points advantage right now. He doesn't need to do anything that might create a mistake on his part. Nemechek able to clear the 21 of Hill. So he takes that second spot away. That goes back to those keys we talked about, big picture. Yeah. Right? So now, if you're this 20 car... You, I think it's, and listen, this isn't the driver's job. This is Ben Bayshore's job. He needs to be on the radio, the crew chief of John Hunter, and say, listen, plus 47. I know we're not locked in, but I would feel really good about going to Martinsville at plus 47. Do not push yourself. Because race car drivers, they only see one thing, checkered flags. That's all they see, that and red. They see checkered flags and red, and today we don't really need either. All guys are seeing red right now, and... Sam Mayer would love to see the checkered flag. John Hunter Nemechek as well. Riley Herbst, uh, second and three tenths behind also. Dave. Josh Perry is out of the infield care center. Josh, racing with the boss there. What happened? Uh, 
yeah, I'm not. I, I'm not really sure. Just got squeezed there. I'm not sure if he. Uh, if he got, I, I have no idea what happened. I haven't seen it. Just got squeezed in the wall there and had something broken, tire down, something to three. Just, uh, just a long day, long day. Um, but we, re, we, had, we had some really good restarts. Um, that one looked like it was going to work in our favor again and just unfortunately uh, didn't make it. So um, just a tough day. Just want to thank everybody at Junior Motorsports. I want to thank Tire Pros for being a big supporter of mine the last few years. Um, just... Got to keep plugging away and try to make something out of these last two weeks. Two weeks to go for Josh Berry before he'll take over uh, behind the wheel of the four that Kevin Harvick is vacating. Allgaier running right along the fence as the double zero of Cole Custer has been able to get in front of Allgaier. So now Allgaier has dropped back to 17. Cole Custer ahead of him. And Cole Custer is now above the cut line. Plus two. And every position's gonna matter. Every point's gonna matter. We have seen drivers be tied in the cutoff race. So at this point, you know, Cole Custer gains one, and you also take one away from the seven. That's really an important point in the race for the double zero. These two are gonna wish they could do the race over. I know just a little bad luck, maybe a little bad execution, a little bit of both. You know, as I watch the Sam Mayer, the leader of the race here, he is right up against the wall. He is doing everything that he needs to do to make sure he stays out front. John Hunter Nemechek in second is not challenging the wall right now. I, so I think he's in that position. Maybe his crew chief came on and told him exactly what you were talking about there, Steve. Uh, it's going to be hard for John Hunter to make up that difference by doing that because Sam Mayer is running so good up against the wall. He's been fast the majority of the last, but this last one, uh, Nemechek was about a tenth quicker. And just to give you an idea, we have, if you look on the bottom left, Mayer leader, that's what moves him in to the points. But So right here, he's leading. But if he gets passed to second, if I look at the point total on our timing monitor, that puts him all the way down here be between these two, if you can believe it. He basically becomes the cut line. So that's why, you know, risk versus reward, well, the reward is too big. All the risk has to be there. At this point for the one, this is the moment. This is his moment as a young driver to prove he is ready because Herbst is coming. Riley Herbst has got pace. He is faster than Sam Mayer the last couple laps. He's even faster as he runs down the 20. So if you're the one, you can't be cruising. Under 14 laps to go. Mayer, Nemechek, Herbst, they don't want a caution to come out. Sheldon Creed currently running 13th, 15 seconds behind. He would love a caution to come out. Yeah, if he had the perfect Magic 8 ball, run about six or seven laps, get a yellow, and he'd be in good shape. I don't even know if he wants it that much, you know, just to make sure that you have, have enough the time. time. You mean having uh -oh. more time? Oh, Jeff Burton go. with a problem, and the 27, maybe the right front down on this one. Is he going to spin out? He's trying to get the pit road. Just stay straight, get on pit road. He made it. Uh, running 11th, too. Having a pretty decent day for Jeb. Let's take a look at what happened. Yeah, just in the fence. Hard to tell if the tire went down first. Cause or result. Never know which was first, but either way, a flat right front. But that, to back to your point, that's all Creed needs. There's, there's a bunch yeah. of cars riding around out here with beat up right sides. Crew goes to work. And they'll put four fresh ones on the 27, although they'll be worn. John Hunter Nemechek. Looking back on that 98 of Riley Herbst, he's still not been able to close the gap and get by him. And guys, I looked out the window. So Dale Jr. is up in fifth spot. And the first four are running up against the wall, and Dale Jr. was running around the bottom of the racetrack. <laughs> I said, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> New I world. thought the eclipse was last week. <laughs> New world. Dale Jr. Uh, not right up against the wall with under 11 laps to go now. And the 20 had had to move up because Riley Herbst, uh, just a couple of laps before, had moved up, and it looked like he was going to try to see if he could make some gains and get a pass, probably get to the outside there. And so John Hunter kind of had to move up to stop that moving forward. Mayer still with a 1.3 second advantage over Nemechek. 1.5 seconds over Riley Herbst. That's the gap. Right there is second and third.
John Hunter Nemechek with enough tape on that windshield that the sun wasn't in his eyes. You could see it was down about where yeah. the bottom of his helmet is. Yeah. He was about a tenth quicker than, than what Sam Mayer was the last lap. When you think about Sam Mayer, came into the day 16 points below. Not a must win, but had to have a monster day. A must win would be huge. This is a driver that got his first win just 11 weeks ago, right? At Road America, backed it up at Watkins Glen, then again at the Charlotte Roval. So, you know, three times at the road course, still looking for that oval track win. And I know the other three are special, but I think when you grow up a stock car driver, you think ovals. You don't think road courses as much. Cam, what are you hearing on the one of Sam Mayer, the leader? Well, the interesting thing about coming into this race, they didn't feel like they had to win it. Crew Chief Marty Lindley told me they were going to try and break up that points difference, minus 16 between this race and Martinsville. Marty actually said Martinsville was a stronger track for Sam, so their goal today was to finish fifth in both stages and then a fourth-place finish overall. Well, they have absolutely superseded that. A second-place finish in stage one, a fourth-place finish in stage two. Right now, leading the race, Pretty quiet from Sam on the radio, but spotter Kevin Hamlin giving him updates on where he's running relative to John Hunter Nemechek in that second position. The gap has not changed, Kim, either. 1.3 yeah. seconds is about where they have been. Okay, I would be on the radio if I was Ben <laughs> Bayshore. Uncle, uncle, I'd be calling for uncle. Watch us the 20 and watch the windshield. In the windshield, look at these white gloves. Whoa, 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 oh, whoa, whoa. He's catching it, sliding it. I'm like, hey, man. Oh, this would be a great shot. Watch this save. Listen in. Yeah, okay. Oh. I know you're in control, but could you do this for my own blood pressure? Could we just let the 98 go? Again, the free pass. If a caution were to come out, the fight is now between the 39 and the double zero. As the 98 has cleared John Hunter Nemechek, Riley Herbst going to try to reel in Sam Mayer as under seven laps to go now in this race. And we really don't know how much the 20 was holding up the 98. No. If the double zero, that 39 could be a bunch of spots if we have a yellow because it would put him on that lead lap. Points would be available. And with six to go, I mean, if you're the fan of Sheldon Creed, Cross your fingers, hope, you know, put your rally cap on. You need a yellow so they could use that last set of tires. Yeah, that would be unfortunate if this race ended and Sheldon Creed had a fresh yeah. set of tires laying there in the pits. Yep. Sheldon Creed right now running in the 12th position, 21 seconds behind race leader Sam Mayer. The gap 1.6 seconds back to Riley Herbst. I like this gamble, though, for Sheldon Creed because... I mean, he's still running 12th. He's been 5th to 12th. I mean, what's it going to cost him? Seven points? He's minus 49. Yeah, a good gamble. And, Steve, you mentioned a caution coming out, you know, and having a green-white checker could still even win him the race because of those fresh tires. Yeah, anything before the white flag would generate overtime, and we'd have an extended race. The battle for that free pass. If the caution comes out on the bottom of your screen, here comes Cole Custer. He's going to make the pass now on Ryan Sieg. Under four laps to go in the race. And that last lap, Herbst yeah. closed in on Mayer almost three tenths of a second. Yeah. And if you just get close enough, you know, you get that guy looking in his mirror, maybe you could get Sam to make a mistake. And we have a car really slow on the flat in three and four. I think he'll get back around the 24 car. Yeah, Connor Mozak is on that access road. 98 is coming, though. He is coming. It's eight tenths of a second now that separate first and second. Riley Herbst is on a roll. Oh. Three to go. Another big chunk, Rick. Now he's close enough that now when the one looks up, DJ, he's going to see that 98 in the mirror. Well, the 98 has changed his line to get at not only the air to the front of his car, but he's able to drive into the corner a lot harder, and he's making up a lot of time just on the entry to the corner. Last lap, he was three-tenths of a second faster than Sam Mayer. Riley Herbst, could he go back-to-back? -back? He won his very first Xfinity Series race one week ago at Las Vegas. Now he's reeling in race leader Sam Mayer. He can see Sam Mayer really battling his car. Looks like it's extremely loose right now. He's even moving down off the wall to see if he can get a little bit of grip and a little bit more speed. 
and a little defensive. Maybe yeah. trying to, I'm sure he got information from the spotter. The 98 is lower. Try to be defensive. He's going to have to figure it out for about another two, two and a half miles. Can he get within striking distance? Here comes Riley Herbst. And the two of Sheldon Creed on pit road. Smoking. This time by. For the one. It's one lap to go. Presented by Credit One Bank. We're on your line down here. What will Riley Herbst do to try to get his second win? Sam Mayer, that championship four spot, right out in front of him as he slides out of turn two. Yeah, he could try and shoot down to the bottom here, run maybe a lane up off the wall, have the air block as best we can here, goodbye four. To the bottom of the racetrack, or the middle, goes the 98 of Riley Herbst. Can he get a run? Sam Mayer, coming up of turn four. Sam Mayer into the wall. He gets free. Here comes Hurts. It's going to be Sam Mayer. He wins his way to the championship four. Good stuff today, boys. Best pit row we've had. Best car we've had. We have to have this, boys. Thank you. What a run by Sam Mayer holding off Riley Herbst on the very last lap. That was impressive. That young man, That that is... We talk about the difficulty of this track and trying to run up against the wall, but trying to win a race and knowing what it brings with it. Oh my gosh, great job. That last set of corners in three and four, Rick, right here, the one puts it right on the boards. No options other than a great corner. There's no defense to this. This is pure offense and what is it, an inch? Oh, yeah. But you you got to protect that. You've got to make Riley Hurts try to pass you on the inside. You see, Rick, you called it. He was into the wall there, but kept his foot in the gas. Never let off the gas, and there's the margin of victory. The 20-year-old now four career wins, and this is his first on an oval. More importantly, at just 20 years old. He will now be guaranteed a shot at the championship at Phoenix. Yeah, John Hunter Nemechek at plus 44. I feel very good about him, and that's basically where it ends. We have an absolute battle between three Titans, Cole Custer, Austin Hill, and Allgaier, basically three points apart right around the cut line. Martins, you are not going to want to miss, miss the short track next week. Martinsville next Saturday for the Xfinity Series. And that will determine the four drivers that fight for that championship. Three are going to join Sam Mayer. With this win here, Sam Mayer locks himself into the championship four. We've seen excitement out of Sam Mayer after he has won. He won most recently at the Charlotte Roval. But now, this one probably the most important. Let's hear from the driver as he pulls his helmet off. Kim Kuhn down there with him. And you saw him hold up those fours to the camera. Fourth win on the season, but the first win on an oval and does it when it matters most. Locks himself into the championship four. Sam, your first win on an oval, but more importantly, you're running for a championship. What does this mean? That's unreal. We won on an oval. Woo! <laughs> I can't believe it. Like. These guys, the Accelerate Hux Camaro today was just so good. Like, obviously the double zero, he, he was as fast as Xfinity 10G, but so are we. So it all, it's all about putting a full race together. And I'm so proud of these guys. They kicked tail on pit road and we made it happen with these HMS engines. We saw Riley Herbst give you a run for your money there at the end. What was going through your mind as you saw him in your mirror? Stuart Haas had it today, that's for sure. Um, it's just really cool to be able to beat a amazing organization like that so uh riley's definitely turned it on and uh we got to turn it on a little harder going in phoenix you're a winner at an oval sam mayer locks himself into the championship four at phoenix as his crew comes in for a celebration crew telling them how proud they are of what sam mayer was able to do here a team win for this number one. And Sam Mayer is now going to head to Ruoff Mortgage Victory Lane and celebrate in style.
Steve, you mentioned it. 44 points for John Hunter Nemechek above the cut line, but only three points separating the double zero, the 21, and the seven. There's only three spots available. So somebody's going to have to lose out. Could it take a win like what we saw to Sam Mayer? We don't know any first responders who only give 90% or farmers, the workers who build our towns, roads, infrastructure. They don't stop at halfway. And good luck finding a small business owner who's happy with an 80% effort. That's why they use Ford trucks. Ford F-Series, 100% assembled in America. Because we're all in on America. You know what's crazy? Is that you can get a buffet to go? That Tony is getting a salad. And Lou should not do stand-up. But that's like a third roll. I'm on a roll. Then you can start with dessert. Or how about soup? Wait and pay, baby. Hey, it's me, your dry skin. I'm craving something we're missing. The ceramides in CeraVe. CeraVe with three essential ceramides helps restore my natural barrier so I can lock in moisture and we can feel it long after. CeraVe moisturizers. Sam Mayer headed to some pretty impressive real estate. Victory Lane here at Homestead Miami Speedway, which is right at the start finish line. And that's a place I'm sure that Riley Herbst would love to be right now, other than talking with Marty. Yep, Rick, he uh, took a moment after the race, put his head down on the top of his car. I want to ask you one more lap, Riley. Would you have passed him for the win? I don't know. Uh, that's a lot of hypothetical. I felt like we had a really fast Monster Energy car for sure. Um, it wasn't that great yesterday in practice. It wasn't that great in stage one and two, but Davin and the boys kept wrenching on it and told me to keep my head in it, uh, continue to race, continue to fight. That's what we did. Um, really bummed out for Cole. Uh, he definitely was a class of the field like we were last week. So uh, hopefully we can continue this SHR dominance and uh, head on to Martinsville and Phoenix for uh, a couple more checkered flags. Yeah, Dave, since he re-signed for next year, a win and a second place here at Homestead Miami. The 98 team has put people on notice in the Xfinity Series garage. Championship contender John Hunter Nemechek is now plus 44 to the cut nine. Not locked in yet as you go to Martinsville. What kind of challenges did you overcome today to get third? A lot, I feel like. Um, we had a really fast Toyota uh, GR Supra with Pi Barker colors on it today. Thanks to Toyota, TRD, um, all of our great partners. Uh, this thing was almost as fast as Xfinity 10G, but um, overall, solid day for us. We, we had a solid points day. Uh, with the one win in, it, it kind of took away our chance to lock in on points. So um, still a solid cushion behind us. Looking forward to going to Martinsville. We won there earlier this year. So hopefully we can go there and just have a solid day. Um, it doesn't matter if we win. As long as we lock into Phoenix, that's all that matters. Yep, and you can hear it in his voice. Didn't feel 100% today, but, man, what a good run for John Hunter Nemechek, Kim. Well, Dave, Dale Earnhardt Jr. comes home in the fifth position at top five at Homestead Miami Speedway. Is this a successful day for you? Heck, yeah. I was on the top ten. Um, you know, the car was not doing what I wanted it to do, but um, we worked on it, and I, I sent us the wrong way the first stage at the first break, and so we never, once we got that going and, got, and the guys figured out what we needed to do the car, the car got better, and we ran good enough to run fifth. Uh, the, the Josh Berry deal, man, I, I didn't know he was out there. Um, my spotter was saying all the right things, but what I was hearing was something different. Um, so I put that on me. I got a little loose, but I corrected it up the track like there was nobody there. Like I didn't, I didn't know. I thought the eight was coming through the middle. And so uh, when I got loose, I was like just giving myself, you know, I had a lot of room to chase through the fence, the car out there. <clears throat> and I hit that eight. So sorry about that, but not the way I want to send Josh off, right? I want to see him off with a win. But luckily it didn't hurt our car and we were able to finish uh, really good. So I'm happy about it. Happy is the word for Dale Hunter Jr. down here. Very unfortunate for Sheldon Creed. He was actually caught up in a little of that uh, earlier, uh, that bouncing back and forth. But then this is the last lap. Sheldon Creed gets into the wall pretty hard here. Oh, yeah, comes up the racetrack. I can't tell who that is and gets a right rear quarter panel and, man, heavy damage. Misjudged there a little. Take a look at the points after this race here at Homestead, Miami. 
And again with the win, Sam Mayer locks himself into the championship four, 44 points above the cut line. But then, Steve, you mentioned it very tight. Well, and the problem is, you know, a win and you're still in. So even the minus 49s, 54, 65, we think it's a battle for three guys at two spots. But a new winner, it could be three guys for one spot. So there's going to be a lot on the line next week at the paperclip. And again, this was the Xfinity Series. Tomorrow, it's the Cup Series turn. Time is running out for those still alive in the quest to be Cup Series champion. Oh, yeah, fellas. Great job, D.A. You damn right. That's a championship racing right there. Hell of a day. You're all good. Get to that checker flag. Get in there, William. Awesome job. I love this damn racetrack. It's been good to us. Just two chances left to grab a seat in the championship four. Again, that's tomorrow. It gets underway at 2 o'clock on NBC with countdown to green at 2.30. It is the second race of the round of eight for the Cup Series. And, of course, wrapping up with NASCAR America post-race at 6 o'clock streaming on Peacock. Here's Cole Custer. Cole Custer is the dominant car here at Homestead Miami, but a right front went down, Cole. And after all the patience you showed today, how frustrating is this one to take? Yeah, it's hard to hard to swallow. I mean, uh, we had such a fast car, and our guys did such a great job. They deserved the win today. And I just I got in too deep, you know. I mean, I didn't feel like I was pushing it. And I think I just passed a lapper, and I just got out of my rhythm, and I just got in a little too deep and hit the fence. So uh, it just sucks. I mean, this car was so fast. I just need to learn how to back it down when we are when we have that big of a lead. But, uh, I mean, I can't think everybody at Haas and Mason, Stuart Haas Racing. I mean, we are bringing absolute rocket ships to the track right now. Um, and I know we will at Martinsville, too. So um, if it have all that happen today and still be good good on the cut line, I'm really, really proud of. But uh, really burnt, stings just uh, – not getting the win today. When you and I talked before, you thought this was your shot for the championship four, but plus three going to Martinsville. How do you feel about that? And how do you put this one behind you? I feel good about it. I mean, we ran good at Martinsville in the spring, and I think we can go out there and have a really good day. Um, so I'm not, I'm not scared of being plus three. I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm happy with that. But um, it just sucks that you know, you know, you had a dominant car today. So Cole Custer, he's still above the cut line. There's more NASCAR and motorsports coverage, always available on NBCSports.com. Coming up next on USA, it's Chicago PD. After Cole Custer was dominant out front for 114 laps, a uh, tire going down for him, put him onto pit road. And Sam Mayer gets out front and grabs his first win on an oval and locks himself into the championship four.